three, so let's jump in and get going. Um, good afternoon. So already we're at meeting number six of uh, the six we're having on um, these Prize Working Group. Um, uh, I'll say something now that I might have might say at the end, but sometimes we get into such interesting discussions that I forget uh, some closing things. And I just wanted to thank everyone for um, participating. I know people put time and effort into travel, reading, reviewing things, offering comments, and I just feel like people can be very um, helpful and be always chipping in remarks to help us make progress. And um, so I just want to say on behalf of the legislature that's going to use the report that we're putting together, um, thanks very much for um, gathering a lot of useful information. The committee will be able to take this topic up and work um, much more productively faster by virtue of having all this material collected in our website and the report itself. So, thank you all. Um, last time we were going through the uh, notes that we had all submitted back in uh, late October and compiling them into this um, uh, document, you know, items, uh, pros and cons related to those considerations, and then we added in notes as we went. Uh, when we broke off, we uh, stopped actually at um, Stephanie's comments, so I don't know if you had these with you. Um, if not, we can pass by you and double back to give you a moment to find those. It was your uh, one, two, three from back in October. So it's been a while ago, reducing waste and EPI. So why don't we do the opportunity uh, to get finished to yours. And, uh, I'm up with the ones I sent in. Um, and that's a page, they're not numbered, but maybe page 10 or 12, something like that. So I had, as I thought about the same assignment we gave ourselves, uh, I went back all the way to um, maybe one chart and it was reduce the use of some of the products. Um, because I felt like there's, there's a temptation to sort of into the weeds on something and it's easy to lose sight of uh, overall objective. So for me it was um, focusing again on reducing volume and, uh, and then secondly on um, packaging and then it started to get into different types of packaging. So we have glass, plastic and aluminum and uh, why don't I treat those as three separate things. So reducing the volume of glass uh, and I guess it's not necessarily just um, glass per se, but glass that ends up um, as problematic glass. So bottle filled glass, which seems to still have a market, versus um, commingled glass, which uh, seems to be a cost to most these days because of a lack of a, a market for those materials. So let me just double check to make sure with the, the two major processes of all this, but that's still true. Um, so the conversation we've had at different points was related to, um, so I guess we have to use fine glass. Um, uh, and I suppose one way of saying that would also be um, use of volume of, well, can we back up and call it waste glass um, by, uh, diversion to waste markets. I wish I'm trying to say you know, that we would get it a clean stream from more glass if it were to be made available through the bottle. Room. So uh, a pro, I guess, would be that we could reduce MRF costs, right? and increase the amount of um, recycled glass. That sounds true, am I missing anything? I don't know if the contaminated glass ever gets used at a, a, a lower quality use, but it's still 
Um, so I don't want to speak for CSWD, but I can speak to what happens with um, Rutman's glass. Um, so we put glass cleanup equipment in mm -hmm. in last spring of 2019, and it cleans it up quite quite a bit. Okay. Got it to a more marketable material, yeah. if you will. So for a while, that was going up to 2M in Canada mm -hmm. and being made into fiberglass. Um, 2M has since stopped accepting that material from us. Um, I don't know about you, Jen, but they apparently had too much unprocessed material on site, so their Canadian regulators told them they couldn't take any more. Okay. So and we you just. Do that is temporary, or it seems like. Uh, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to to tell, um, but regardless, it's not reliable. Okay. So we are now um, beginning to rail it to North Carolina's to Strategic, mm -hmm. who turns it into either bottle to bottle or another media. There's various medias that they make glass out of. Um, is it a cost center for you, or a profit center, or a it's rate a even? Cost. A cost. Right? Yeah. And, and just curious, so we understand it. Is that because of the cost of transportation of this heavy, not so very valuable By material. rail, it's, it's expensive, yeah, um, and it's, you know, further distance, so the further you transport it, the more expensive it gets, and it's heavy. Um, so if more glass ended up going through the bottle little channel, is that um, something that uh, Casella is neutral on, or Supports, or I just want to. Um, we're not, it's not exactly I mean, how we're it, making a decision, but it's good to know. It, yeah, it's just it's difficult for us because we don't want to. We get concerned about what other materials are going to be taken with that kind of expansion. So, is it just okay. glass? Is it other materials? Because that drives volume of material that is more valuable to the MRF away from the MRF, which is already struggling. Okay. Another, so just to make sure I understand, we've talked some about if that expansion included PET and aluminum, those are profit centers to MRFs. Right. So they help underwrite the cost of handling a loser, money loser. Like, like glass, glass and paper, yeah. Right. So decreasing the cost is fine, but taking away the profits is less right. fine. Right. Well, and that was the way I was thinking about it. Like, mm -hmm. If there's a problematic material, can we divert more of it into a higher use mm -hmm. that ends up being perhaps a, a profit or a center as opposed to a cost center? Um, and just get, you know, from an energetics point of view and all the rest, mm -hmm. more use out of the glass rather than basically having it be a cost to everyone. Well, it's definitely driving up as a fee. So you don't end up <laughs> stockpiling any glass. I mean, you have to, as you process, you need to move it someplace. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that true for you guys as well? Well, we, um, some of our glass um, can't be processed into the PGA material um, in the winter time. Uh, PGA, PGA being processed glass aggregate that we're selling uh -huh. uh, or sending to Wickham. So right. that material either goes to 2M or we're holding on to it until we can continue to process it into PGA or find another outlet. But it certainly is at a cost. That's definitely true. And, um, you know, this was in one of my recommendations that I had passed on yeah. was expansion of the glass. Um, but with that was a repeal of aluminum and 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 pet going to the bottle bill um, because of the cost of the recycling system and, and that concern that um, if you put expansion of the bottle bill of any type on the table that it it moves into other materials that would be pretty detrimental to the recycling system um, current, in its current state so. Um, that is definitely a concern of ours. And, and why I moved it off the yeah. table was um, if we're moving towards <coughs> talking about EPR, right. that really is a system that, you know, on all 
material system approach, which is more likely preferable, and the producers would determine if it's in their best interest to separate glass out and manage it so that it potentially has um, better markets than in a single street system. But if you're requiring them to capture a high percentage of the material, okay, single stream, and you move those materials out of single stream, you might lose some of that material because it's more difficult for consumers to um, to to bring it somewhere separate. separately. Okay. Can I ask so, a nine question about bottle bill? It's not based upon material, right? It's based upon the beverage type. Right. So you couldn't. How would we pull out? Because there's sometimes skews where a particular product could be in aluminum or glass the next week, depending upon the season. How would we pull certain materials out of the bottle bill if it's statutorily based on the type of beverage, right? You'd have to change the law to do it. The entire bottle bill. You could restructure the, well, not the yeah. entire bottle yeah. bill, but those materials that are falling under it. Subject to it. Yeah. Instead of making it a one option to consider would be instead of making it um, beverage type, it would be container type. But that's not something that shows up on a SKU that a retailer can scan necessarily, unless it's okay. an entirely different SKU line. It's the same 12 ounce Coca Cola product, if it's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not going to scan any different for Aaron at the retail. You would have to, I mean, that's, that's set internationally by the GPC one source system so mm -hmm. so that the, the UPC code or whatever that is is um the same whether it's an aluminum or mm -hmm. plastic it, the, 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 it's the, the the product inside that's being sold so that's how the bottle bill cues off of the mm -hmm. UPC scanning so mm -hmm. just throw that out there as a, yeah. a challenge yeah report. that would be challenging to know so even if it's, uh, are they by size? I mean, there's so yeah, it's many by permutations size. of how yeah. you can buy it. Yeah, there's different permutations. So if it's a 12.5 ounce or a 16 ounce, it's going to be the same skew, but some bottlers may also run in glass and may run in aluminum. It'll, it'll change by season because, you know, glass doesn't go as well in the cooler, you know, and as water moves into aluminum potentially in some cases now, it's still the same serving size. It, it, whether or not it's a different skew is, ba is based upon the product, the, the, the volume of sale, the, the ounces, that type of thing. At least that's how it is in all the other consumer goods. Whether or not you could create a, a separate skew, it would have to be a different product in the entire global GS1 system. So you would have to, in essence, create two sets of SKUs almost for Vermont and non bottle bill states you know, it's just using two sets of packaging as well. Yeah. So council had something to share with. I think you're all right. Um, and that's the, the issues come up with wine bottles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the proposal has been to manually sticker the wine bottles. That's what we do in Maine. Yeah. And it's a nightmare. Um, but it's done in one state warehouse. And when they, in Maine, we exempted carton based wine from the bottle bill and it's been an absolute, from what I understand, nightmare. Um, and, that, and why? And can you just, you know, one of the reasons The, the chair of the Environment Committee was preferable towards boxed wine. But why is it a nightmare? Years ago. Just because it's... The individual it, sticker. I mean, it, it all comes into the warehouse, it's sold by the same manufacturer, so they have to break it out, mm -hmm. put it aside, not sticker that while they're stickering everything else, and then put all the SKUs back together to go out to to retail. So, so it's really not the manufacturer doing that, like we heard, it's more the distributor? It's the distributor well, or the retailer? State, the retailer. Run, state run business in Maine, and I'm not as familiar with the Vermont system, so yeah. I don't want to speak towards that, but <coughs> state run system, state own public private partnership with the warehouse, and then it goes out to the retailers from there, they're all agency stores, but mm -hmm. it's a state run business. So. If you've got different distributors and not a state-run uniform model, it's even going to be harder than, yeah. than it is in Maine. So well, maybe Jen's um, suggestion then to put it all in the EPR program and let the manufacturers figure it out. Can we just get clarity? Yes, this came up with distilleries, too, with the glass bottles. 
And there, I didn't say anything at the time when he was testifying, but there aren't stickers on Vermont. No, there were when they spirits. were originally moved into Residence. the definition, which was in 1990. But then they started labeling yeah. their yeah. product um, according to the labeling requirements, because a couple other states went with the liquor route as well. Right, so why wouldn't glass, in this case, wine bottles, follow that exact same model? And he was testifying that they currently <coughs> which Right, I, I, I think if you did, you, it's about, um, it's about the distributors and the manufacturers, because you probably are going to have foreign wines that aren't going to bother. Right? Yeah, it's the international stuff that's a problem. And but Tangeray has no problem doing that. Well, Tangeray, I think, is owned by that Canadian company. Which is an international right. company. Right. But, um, but that's so. just one company. So, And I think it goes back to a conversation we had at the last meeting, and it's just because one manufacturer can do it doesn't mean that all manufacturers are going to do it. So I, I guess I just wanted to correct that testimony because mm -hmm. there is an manual labeling happening on this stuff. On, on the providers okay. in Vermont, they have adjusted to the law. I think the only time that would be is if there was a special order, Mike. That's what they call it, right? a special order for a special kind of liquor through through Department of Liquor. And Mike used to work for Liquor. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not a raging alcoholic. <laughs> I worked for the lottery when we were going through the merger of liquor and lottery, yeah. so I, by happenstance, learned a lot about. You know, that's yeah. liquor distribution. It's very similar. The main main uses uh, Pine State, mm -hmm. the Pine Street distributors. Pine Vermont State. does yeah. it all in house in the warehouse right up there. Mm -hmm. So, it's a state owned. It's a state control. So I think right now most of it's only going to be a special order liquor where you're going to see that stuff. <coughs> okay. So for products, then let me just pause and think about products that aren't. If what. Uh, make sure it's alcoholic products in glass sold in Vermont that aren't in the bottle bill uh, currently that are wine and I don't know if there's hard ciders in glass. Cider is fine. The cider is free as wine. Um, anything, anything else? Uh, kombucha has but at a level so low that it's not, yeah, not, 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 not alcohol. No, there is alcoholic kombucha that's over... 0 0.5, right? No, I can't. I think it was 2. 2? So I can't remember, but it, it, it's also carbonated. So mm -hmm. it, it gets in under carbonation. That is captured or excluded? I believe it's captured. Captured. Kombucha in stores now, like non-alcoholic? Non alcoholic, I. I the non alcoholic is not captured. It's, it's not think. regulated by the liquor department. But if you're talking about 2.2. 2. Right, that's, that would be regulated by the. I think it all depends on how carbonated it is. Um, it's not a, it's, it's a <laughs> soft drink. <laughs> right, because right? that's, that's one of the categories. It's a soft drink. Correct. <laughs> Well, I have a high pain threshold, so I'm not giving up yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I go back to uh, trying to increase the amount of glass, it doesn't just end up as an expense. Um, so I'll throw it open to the group if we're starting to talk about expanding, for instance, the number of alcoholic beverages that are handled by the bottle bill. Mm -hmm. What's a suggestion that uh, strikes this group as more workable than um, hand stickering, for instance, a uh, holding category? Well, we've always suggested what will be submitted and then what Jen was talking about, like an EPR type of system. Right. And then you capture all glass right. under that system, not just the bottle of glass, you capture it all. Um, and then, you know, I don't know where the unclaimed death sheets are fitting into all of this, but. I know that they're currently being redirected towards the Clean Water Fund, and that money should really be redirected towards having the modern recycled glass. Yeah, that's a artifact of politics. <laughs> the session was ending. <laughs> I know, but I just put that on record. <laughs> and people saw that as a, a 
environmentally uh, friendly <laughs> use of those Proceeds. Well, what's happening now, though, is people are saying, oh, my, my nickel, if I don't take it down to the redemption center, I, it, it goes to clean water, so I'm just going to put it in the blue bin, so we're going to see more bottle bill material coming to the MRF as a result of that. So the <laughs> way to deal with that is to increase the deposit to a dime. Without fail, any state that has done that has seen a fairly significant increase in the rate of return for redemption. Uh, and so that is a way of not only encouraging higher participation, whether you leave the bottle bill as is, or my preference, of course, would be to expand it. If you expanded it to include wine, um, water, and sports drinks, you would add around 200 million more containers per year. That would be about a 40% increase in the bottle bill. If you have a 40% increase in the number of items covered by the bottle bill, and an increase in the deposit, even though you would have a higher rate of participation, you might see an 85% redemption rate instead of a 75% redemption rate, you would still have more money in an unclaimed deposit fund as well. And I actually agree, and our preference would also be to see it go to help improve recycling and solid waste needs. I think the nexus is undeniable. And, so count me on, but either one of us are making a decision. <laughs> I've, said, I've said that in testimony. There's nothing new there. But I, you get the industry and environmentalists agreeing. Yeah, on I, I, have, I have no objection. But, um, but one way of thinking about that is if you expanded it in the way that we're talking about, you would have 40% more, you know, bottles in the yeah. system, and then you could you could use then a percentage of those unclaimed deposits, or if the money committees were so inclined, they could they could say, well, 60% is gonna stay with clean water, which would be the universe of what they have now, and 40% would go to any of the other programs that we're talking about, including, I would argue, potentially examining what is the real cost to the solid waste districts, for instance, if you were to take out additional aluminum and PET. All we're talking about is money, because there is no question that the better way to achieve the charge of this committee, that is to reduce the volume of waste going to landfills to, as secondarily perhaps, encourage recycling and recycling at the highest possible level. All of that happens when these containers go through the bottle bill system because it is a cleaner product. I don't think there's any disagreement around the table there. So you get more material being returned, more being recycled, less going to the landfill, and yes, there would be a financial cost to the districts, but let's figure out what that is and perhaps you know, give them some money from the unclaimed deposits to make up for that. That way, you're keeping them whole while also achieving the goals at a much higher rate of what this committee is supposed to be looking at. It's not just the districts, though. It's the private industry, well, So to figure out if you want to do that. I, 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 I'm not arguing that you, yeah. that you wouldn't suffer some financial yeah. loss, but I think the financial loss that you or the districts would suffer <laughs> would be far less than the volume of new revenue coming into the state from unclaimed deposits. So it's an opportunity to think about, first, how do you achieve the goals of this committee? Not like, oh my gosh, I might be harmed or if I'm a district, and so therefore we can't do it. But it seems to me, let's think about how to achieve the goals, and then if there is a financial harm, how could that be addressed? Keep the two separate. Yeah. Yeah, the one caution I would have about increasing the deposit from five to 10 cents is we're surrounded by states that either have a nickel or nothing on containers. And so part of that increase is, yeah, people are going to bring in more containers, but we're also going to invite more fraud. And, you know, frankly, we can't keep up with the, you know, we, DEC can't keep up with the system that we have today. If the fraud increases, I don't know how, how we could you know, keep up with that. Um, and so, so, you know, should we um, try to reach out to our neighboring states, you know, New York, uh, Massachusetts, skip over New Hampshire, Maine, um, to see where they're at with their deposit. Maine's at five, except spirits are at 15. And but, at right, but I meant, um, I know where they're at currently, but are they considering increasing? Because I think, you know, we are going to be a target if we are surrounded by states that have lower. Well, we see that on spirits in Maine, where a lot of spirits from New Hampshire and wine from New Hampshire ends up in Maine for the fraud. Um, and part of it probably here too. And we have 15 cents on, on liquor. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, and the other thing, 
<laughs> to offer a complicating factor to all this was that um, we talked some about the number of sorts currently in yes. volume, yeah. and that if we start adding volume, we ought to make sure that we're we're addressing the the, the current um, point of friction in the existing system before right. we add that system to increase its volume. Okay. Well, there is a suggestion that's out there for that, which could easily be incorporated into this. It doesn't need to be before you do it. It could be simultaneous. Right, right. I just mean I don't want to lose yeah. sight. Of it. I totally mm -hmm. agree. Thank you. Um, Thank you for remembering. So maybe in the, uh, I don't know if you've seen the comments column, but at, at any rate, something uh, yeah. along the lines of current, uh, um, current system. system. Current, yeah, current system has too many sorts. We'll just call that. For redemption. Yeah. Oops. Commingling is voluntary, right? At this point, yeah. Correct. So, uh, as I suppose it's a no thing, right? Uh, Commingling is voluntary. Mm -hmm. And so, what's the order uh, in terms of when you're sorting for? Um, container type in the co-mingling program, there's like roughly a dozen sorts, and mm -hmm. if you're not in that, then there's up to over a over hundred <laughs> sorts yeah. for the... About a hundred additional sorts, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might be side of that. Um, and that's a real burden to retailers and redemption centers, space and staffing. Right. Can you uh, also capture Paul's comment about um, that Let's keep the optimizing the stream, the recycling stream, separate from the finances, so that we can uh, we might optimize in a way, look at the financial implications, and then find another way to adjust, as opposed to leaving materials where they are because the nickels travel with them, or because there's a market for PET or aluminum, so that people will be made whole, but it could be after the fact. So, separate from the financing stream. Yes, thank you. Uh, any other comments on this one? Increase MRF, increase recycled glass, two new sorts. Um, Another note there too would be, uh, as you were saying, this could be addressed through EPR. Mm -hmm. well, the um, of course, the, well, many people believe the bottle bill is EPR, so you, yes. you can talk about it, another kind of EPR. But. Right. It's just more than one stakeholder pays in the bottle bill than manufacturers. Which is shared responsibility, which is potential way to go. Well, and I think the other thing, too, uh, based on our conversations the last couple of months, is that uh, full-blown EPR for packaging waste, which I suppose are what we call bottles and all this, is going to be a multi-year effort. Um, and so I wouldn't want a hamstring moving up piece because we don't have the whole thing mapped out. Yeah. Uh, balance between the two. You don't want to push one thing ahead to the detriment of others. Right. Prematurely, whatever. Okay. So the second thing I put down here was uh, reduce the volume of single-use non-beverage packaging. Um, and then for strategy, I put down implement EP, EPR for this category of goods. So I suppose uh, I'll just say that one again. So it was reduce volume of single-use non-beverage packaging. Uh, and again, so for pros, I think it'd be uh, we're, uh, reducing uh, reducing amount of material to the landfills. Okay. 
we've already got APR for printed and packaged materials on the first sheet. Yeah. Do we combine the two or do yes. you want to do two yeah, separate? Yeah. 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 I was going to ask, this, 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 this include the package of yeah. printed materials. Yeah. Um, so maybe back of that. Can you point out where? where uh, I think the, that's on page one. It's the discontinue slash integrate bottle redemption <laughs> and in place with EPR for printed and packaged materials. So this one? Yep. Yeah, I, I okay. think it sounds like the same to me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so so then. Did you find that yet on page four? Yeah, for okay, sure. thanks. Yeah. Uh, and my own notes on that one I had, um, see if any of this should go in. I'll just read breadth, scope, and timing to be determined dependent on, in part, of what other um, <laughs> I, I copy pasted, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> what other elements we put into the um, into the UPR program? So, and the other note I had was implement a post-consumer waste requirement to boost the marketplace for the solid waste system. The reset belt content. I think we have that somewhere yeah. else too. Which we've yeah. also uh, said elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no new original thinking. <laughs> you don't have to add that one. Thank you. Paul. Uh, I, I want to remind the uh, group that we had testimony from Unomia who had done the analysis and study from Ontario which was looking at not replacing the bottle bill but keeping and expanding their bottle bill program and expanding their EPR to deal with other forms of packaging. So I wouldn't if I understand it correctly, you're suggesting it goes under this. The language is to discontinue and replace the bottle bill. You could do that, or you could keep the bottle bill. You could expand the bottle bill and do this for non-bottle bill items. And that's what the Canadian, a number of Canadian provinces have done. And again, you've got that analysis from Ontario on how yeah. it can work. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, that's why it actually we, uh, we ended up adding integrate yes. back in to make sure it's not uh, we don't want it to be a false choice if we have to go one or the other. We could have gone upright and fall. So um, there is another EPR mentioned on page four at the top. And um, I wanted to make sure that, because that was on my list, and I wanted to make sure that eco modulated fees was part of that recommendation. And on um, this particular one, it is there. And it talks about expanding the bottle bill. Um, in the notes under that recommendation, I'm not sure. So I don't know if we want to try to combine the two or, or leave them separate for the sake of not maybe being able to find a common. Right. I don't know, but it is in both places, right. and the bottle bill is in both places too on different sides right. of the aisle. So I, you know, Pop I, page five. I think having different flavors of the same idea seem easier to hold on to rather than trying to reach a consensus as to how we would know them all together. Because um, there are competing interests, you know, that we all have to balance off. Um, so I think with your, in, in that vein, the eliminate use of single-use plastic packaging. I mean, the eco-modulated fees are one way to get at that. So I would just, I, I would recommend that that comes with that recommendation. Okay. So did we, um, do we add that as the last? What's the very bottom of our document look like now? I think we started and then stopped adding that one. Just, buying the glass. So we stopped with glass. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your eco-modulated fees piece is still in the EPR section. Yeah, you were, um, yeah, I was just think, commenting on your uh -huh. recommendation for EPR mm -hmm. to reduce the amount of single-use plastic. Okay. Um, and do we have, sorry, I know we're bouncing back and forth, you're still That's working. Okay. Do we have a, um, let's add a post-consumer waste requirement in that Earlier one. In page one. Not one. Keep 
I'm looking for it. There is post consumer uh, waste. Yeah, increased mandate for recycled content is on the page five, right below uh, All right. the EPR. Great. Thank you. Is that this one? No. And then the third. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say eco modulated feeds also That's appear awesome. as their own at the top of page six. Uh, the third one I had in was, and I, I think we already have, I mean, it's EPR for sending plastic packaging. Uh, so that's already rolled into the one we have. Uh, so um, having gone through those, let me double back uh, to Stephanie's, which are roughly page seven or eight. Of our, do you have those now? Yeah. Okay. I think I would consolidate them with others. So back to the bottle bell in the testimony that we didn't hear that maybe I was supposed to represent. It's all of the restaurants. And so currently the bottle bill doesn't really work for restaurants in that mm -hmm. the 15 cent liquor bottle in my experience and then I actually did a small sampling from Brattleboro, St. Johnsbury and even one here. People are, the restaurant owners are redeeming the 15 cent liquor bottles but not beer cans and that's for two reasons. One, to pay an employee to redeem something that's worth five cents. It's not smart. <laughs> you end up paying more than you're receiving back and two, there's aren't space in these small restaurants to be basically sorting. Um, and so the mechanism in which the distributor is supposed to collect the redeemables, they're asking us to sort. And so I'm sure you can all picture a restaurant and a size restaurant, they don't have the capability to sort, and now you're back to staffing, who's not gonna sort in the, when they're pouring, when they have five tickets to pay one they're not going to take the time to sort. So I feel like the expansion of the bottle bell after sitting in all these meetings would be to expand, would, would have to be to expand the amount if you're going to expand anything to make, if, if it's the deposit. to, yes, thank you, to, to increase the deposit if the goal is to get things out of the waste stream, okay. but that money is going to talk. So are restaurants blue binning their, yes. their beer cans and yes. whatever? The other, the other, the non spirits that yeah. make one. Yeah. So, I'm a. So I had originally written expand bottle mm -hmm. to to glass bottles, um, and increase deposit on cans. But I'm amending that that it would have to be any. If the track record shows, it yeah. looks like 15 cents is what talks. Um, that we in the back of our car two times a week usually the owner because you don't want to pay someone but it's worth the exchange right well and the volume must be all lower right i mean there any fewer bottles of spirits than bottles of beer it depends on the restaurant uh -huh. yeah. so are you suggesting uh, 15 cents yeah, and then I also would like to look at the inefficiency of the system that is supposed to be collecting these redeemables. If there is a system in place. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but that goes back, I believe, to the commingling and all the sorts. So, so my understanding is that um, beer distributors, when they drop off, um, their product, they charge the nickel deposit per container, whether it's at a store or a restaurant. Um, and then they can and are responsible for picking up their brands from um, the, the restaurants. And that's where the restaurants would have to sort, because, like, you know, um, the brand is only going to 
pay for their brand, not sure. all the other brands. And that's the space limitation, which I totally understand. Um, we have sent letters, we even did it again this year, mm -hmm. to distributors to remind them of their responsibilities for picking up their containers from restaurants. Because we are hearing from redemption centers that we can deal with um, residential containers, we can't deal with restaurant containers. We don't have the space. You know, and I understand that from a redemption center. So we're trying to remind, you know, the the, the distributors, but then it's the sorting issue. That's, that's and yeah, and then I mean, doing my homework, there wasn't one rep that could answer the question without yeah. hanging up the phone, making phone calls. So none of the reps knew about the pickup. Well, it's up to the driver to pick up. And then there are stipulations mm -hmm. in the pickup. You have to have full boxes. You can't have incomplete boxes of the same SKU. Perhaps one consideration would be fun. exempting uh, establishments where the container does not leave the establishment, mm -hmm. um, where the container leaves the establishment, Subway. You know, the Coca-Cola container leaves Subway. So they would not be exempt. But restaurants where the container does not leave perhaps should be exempted from the, the metal deposit. That might be that might alleviate your issue about having to do the sorts or lose that nickel and just put it in the recycling stream. But it doesn't alleviate all of the recycling in this waste stream, correct? Correct. No, no. We, but, blue bin. Right, it no, recycled, it would, though. It would get recycled. It would have to be in either one bin or the other. It can't be in the trash. We have mandated recycling for all these materials. Well, since you're speaking from the restaurant perspective, right now that's basically what's happening. Right? Yes. It's just getting... But they're out of nickel. Right. Correct. Right. So cost of doing business in Vermont. Yeah. Yes. So thank you for that contribution to the Clean Water Fund. <laughs> so should we put that up on there? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, how do you want to phrase your suggestion? Increase uh, increase the fee on, in the bottle bill uh, to 15 cents. The deposit. The deposit. Oh, deposit. Thank you. Thank you. Very sensitive. I think, I think it <laughs> optimize the inefficiencies of the. Right. System, because that's the first time hearing I'm hearing that the redemption centers don't actually want us to bring it to the. I, and I, I think that's going to be redemption sure. center specific. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm, maybe it's better said that the system wasn't created to do that. Right. There's I don't think another system the law, that's not working. There's any. Is there any way that they can refuse somebody bringing? The, they they can't. But you know the real obligation is on the distributor to pick them yeah, up the from totally the business agree. establishment. That's, that's maybe part of the recommendation is to figure out that that's maybe where right. it's falling down. I would say that after Stephanie told us about this, we've done some research, uh, primarily in Montpelier and Burlington, asking the same set of questions of mm -hmm. restaurant owners there. And she's absolutely right that the vast majority say they recycle it, don't mm -hmm. don't bring it back. A few bring it back on their own. And then there were two or three that had an arrangement with a distributor who did take it. But, that they had figured that out. But others said, no, our distributor would never do that. So it seems like that there is a, a not complete education, mm -hmm. maybe, among all the participants in the mm -hmm. system, too. Mm -hmm. right. As a representative of retailers who would essentially be um, off-put by restaurants getting an exemption, essentially, um, wouldn't it be smarter, A, to fix the system? so that we don't lose the money, or we're not just essentially saying we're going to grow the SGs and not fixing the system when our goal is to reduce products within the waste system. Um, I don't think that exempting, I get it, restaurants don't have the space, but and the redemption centers don't have the space either, either but I think exempting them isn't fixing the problem. And so I think we should be looking at reducing the number of sorts and working again with the distributors and the redemption centers and the retailers and the restaurants to fix the system instead of just simply exempting one stakeholder. And raising a fee. And raising a fee, yeah. So I'm thinking we're better served this afternoon to not get into how this would work, but rather what we have up there, 15 cents and 
Um, review inefficiencies. Review and correct inefficiencies. Yes. Review and correct inefficiencies as a as a separate. No, that would be part of that one. I think because it's that's the bottle bill guy. One of the bottle bill guys. Right. Review and correct uh, inefficiencies, uh, especially for restaurants or, or whatever. Somehow we want to capture that. Because you're talking about a unique situation or a unique category. Like we, I heard that before about restaurants. A lot of bottles. Yeah. And it sounds like a lot of the, the inefficiency stems from the number of sorts. Like the, the space required is a direct result of the number of sorts. The waste is the same. The number of bottles are the same. But you have to spread them out and sort them. There's the labor component as well as the space component. I would say that's equal to me being in this room and Kathy telling me is how I got the information that my truck drivers are supposed to pick it up. Oh, right, right. I'd say it's equal right. and problem. Yeah. Yeah. A small mom and pops have the exact same problem. I am a small mom and pops. <laughs> with, with, with your bottle sorting room, yes. Yeah. So I think to, to put a finer point on it for, for the hospitality industry, you may be doing a disservice. Okay. So for um, pros, then uh, let's keep on filling in our categories here. For uh, the pros would be, is that the tipping point that would expand the number of bottles that go into this? Okay. So, is the money the tipping point? As a question? I guess the pro is to increase the amount of bottles. So can I just clarify? Um, so you want to increase? the fee of deposit to encourage more redemption. Right. I'm saying that I 15 cents that people are recycling those liquor bottles. We're putting in the blue box the five cents. And so that tells me that it's 15 cents makes it worth it. So I to bring it to redemption. Yes. So I see the goal is to increase for some of us, is to increase the stream into the clean glass. Right. But it's, it's, not, it's not fixing the space issue. Where you kind of like, you're either throwing it in the blue bin you know, on a weekly or daily basis. Daily, correct. But I'm identifying that the system that was built for us isn't working, so that would be even a better boom if that started working. So right now, just because so if the outcome is to get a cleaner system, then I would advise that we increase the bottle bill in what we collect and increase the deposit taken, and that would make people act while simultaneously looking at the inefficiencies so the distributors could get a more back and redeem it. But for five cents, it's also not worth figuring all of that. But if you if you fix the inefficiencies and the and the distributor ends up picking it, it up from you, then the mm -hmm. five cents versus fifteen issue goes away for you. Correct. But I would also say that why wouldn't that hold true for anyone who's looking at redemption? If we're a case study and saying fifteen cents makes it worth it, five cents doesn't. I'm sure that that's happening in other places as well. I think I think all that this illustrates is that money is what drives people to go to the redemption center or not. And from what I've heard, I'm, I, I feel I'm more in the camp of going to the redemption center provides cleaner recyclables. Kathy, is there any, requir is there any requirement under law, a rule or whatever, the guidance on how often these materials have to be picked up? Well, I can answer that. They're not in terms of law, but what they told me. Okay. It's just whenever they order. So sometimes you order once. You can only order once a week, basically. And so basically, when they deliver, they yeah. But sometimes you'll so, yeah. sometimes you'll go two weeks without yeah. needing the no. product. The law so is not specific those. about the restaurant component. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I don't they believe are. it's yeah. So you know, we had to be careful in the language we chose when we wrote the letters to the distributors about the need to pick up from restaurants because we couldn't like that point to any specific paragraph 
But if you read the, the law in its entirety, you know, if they drop off something and have a deposit, then they have to pick it up. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, maybe we can clean up the law about that section um, so that there is better service to that segment. So we know there's an opportunity to improve the way it works, exactly how it's sorted out. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be figuring out. Okay, for restaurants especially. Um, how about number two there? I amended that to fit within what's already been written, set a statewide goal of reducing waste for single-use packaging and products. And under that statewide goal would be what's already listed ban on single-use toiletry items and looking at a ban on the plastic eating utensils and plates and bowls. So I guess the new thing that isn't up there is a statewide goal. I don't think I saw it. Right, we have... Um I don't know if the state has any sense of how much single-use toiletry material moves through the state of Vermont. You know, that is something that is getting discussion elsewhere in this country um, with um, um, the hotel business. Um, and so I think you are going to see a movement on, on a national level um, with that, where hotels will, you know, stop using the single-use items and probably more the wall-mounted mounted items. Um, I think they, um, it's... California. I want to say that yeah. there's California. a national goal by 2025, 20, I think. That was sooner than that, but they were, they were looking to ban hotel bottles as an industry. Oh, so it's the bottom of page four, I think we've done it. The hotel shampoo bottles. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. um, and I know, right, there's definitely a California bill that I was just looking at recently. Mm -hmm. All right. um, and then I don't know if you have any more notes that you, things related to, well, I don't want to just go on to the next one. Do you have anything else you wanted to say about those toiletry ones? We, no. Okay. And then on EPR, I don't know if there are I parts of your thinking that are right. on our EPR notes. Yeah. Uh, I, I just slightly change it to be reduced volume of single use non-beverage packaging through EPR, which I, it seems like that's what we're saying on, I don't know, maybe page two, EPR hard to recycle plastics, but that's specific for pla plastics. The bottom of page one. Yeah, I just thought that was odd to lump, discontinue, integrate bottle redemption and replace with EPR. I just didn't know. Well, then we have EPR on the top of page five. And that would be Right. I think that that one feels more like where I was headed. Page, top of page five. Right, and this shorthand, um, I don't know if you were on the line when um, Jen Duggan was citing the uh, goals of the bill. So we, there was a reduction in volume, there was uh, public health impacts, uh, and now I'm having trouble remembering. Increased right. recyclability. Increased recyclability. So that was what the that shorthand of meets all statutory criteria of six hundred ninety-nine. Okay, yeah, the great benefits. I don't know if we spelled that out. Um, we should maybe on the first time we use meets all statutory um, criteria of Act sixty-nine, we okay. should spell out uh, just at a, just a bullet level what those sure. are, so that. To go digging into the, the bill in order to know what the work is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Right, page four, the reduction in waste by date certain, that sort of 
Yes. One that I had said previously is seven statewide. So, so where's that? Oh. Um, um, it's in the yeah. law. Maybe you can cut and paste later on, but it's yeah. that good. A through, is that E? A through E. Yeah. Um, can you reference that? Yeah. So go on, do that. Actually, can you read them out loud right now for everyone in the group just so we hear them again? Make sure that we're all thinking the same thing when we do that. Um, re reduce the use of single use products. B is reduce the environmental impact of single use products. C, improve statewide management of single-use products. D, is divert single-use products from disposal and landfills. And E, prevent contamination of natural resources by discarded single-use products. Thank you. So, Stephanie, anything else you want to add? No. Thank you. I mean, I, I feel like I can't add anything to this list that hasn't been said already, uh, so I'll spare that effort. Um, but uh, I have three, I mean, in my, te my answer to the, that we're all working from, uh, the three big focuses I saw was reduce the amount uh, by volume or weight of single-use products sold into the mud. Um, that's you know, the suite of what we're talking about. Um, taking a measure, you know, we've heard testimony about um, life cycle analysis and the advantages of things like the foil coffee wrap. Um, I think those are important things to take into consideration as we move forward because they do have benefits. Um, so, can I call you? Sorry to interrupt. Yes. Let me just ask. So, Kathy, when you're working in the department of these issues, do you have, as part of your own analysis as you tune and operate, to do life cycle analyses on different parts of waste stream? We don't have the capability of doing a full fledged life cycle analysis. Yeah. They're very complicated yeah. analysis. We would have to really get, you know, probably contract out such a service or rely on others. We looked at the EPA WAR model with a score of materials. We, we do use the WAR model, okay. yeah. And yeah. so when we, at the end of the year, look at how much material gets diverted and how it's diverted, we can tap into that. Mm -hmm. um, that's looking at greenhouse gas emission savings um, by opting one use over another. But if you wanted to do a life cycle analysis, basically, let's say on comparing the use of a, a reusable water bottle versus a, a plastic, you know, a disposable water bottle or a recyclable one, you know, that's pretty complex analysis that looks back at, you know, from um, getting the material, the petroleum products to make the plastic, to, you know, all that stuff. We don't have the expertise in house to do that. We rely on others for that kind of analysis. You know, we can look it up, and we have, for sure, but we don't do that ourselves. Did you want to add to that? Um, not at the moment. I want to add after. Okay. <laughs> you, gave, you gave me the eye. No, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt. I just, when you were mentioning no. that, I wanted yeah, to yeah, it's good check start. in and see where we stood on that issue. Right. Okay, in house. Um, great. Uh, so I think in order you know, to look at the waste stream and to uh, drive recycling um, and do our part in the region to to increase the benefit of recyclables uh, to the system is to take steps to increase both the recyclability um, of single-use products and the recycled content um, through, you know, we heard setting mandates for uh, recycled content um, and then also, you know, working with our own solid waste laws to make sure that recyclable single-use products are being recycled. Um, 
as we saw from the report, you know, we, we do a good job of that in Vermont. Uh, there are step, you know, there's still ground to be gained there. Okay. One thing just to note as we continue to talk about recycled content mandates, uh, most food contact materials can't use recycled content, particularly FDA approved materials. So something we at least have to be aware of, conscious yeah. of, and should be noted as at least a con or a note on it is yeah. you can't take a beverage bottle or you can't take you know your Clorox bottle and ever use that resin or that material with mm -hmm. a lunch tray you know or something like that later so that's something we have to <coughs> acknowledge but you can take a coke bottle and turn it into a coke bottle or a water bottle and yeah. so it's certainly it's post consumer just, recycled content you can in fact coke and others are pledging to do exactly that yeah for beverage containers but that's a different well, ball game and then taking mixed plastics and putting them into food contact that can't be done. Do we have a, uh, something up there that suggests that? So that we should be adding that as a note? Uh, uh, if there's a place that fits. Uh, uh, we're just talking about it. plastic fork. You're saying you can't. So for like a bag of, bag of granola, you couldn't use plastic resin unless it's been certified by FDA as it's only coming in contact with food materials. You couldn't use that resin into. But that system is already in place for them to certify that this has. If it's had any contact. So unless you right. can trace the entire stream, you can take, trace the, where the material came from that never came in contact with Clorox or yeah. you know, any of the other materials, unless you can trace that, you can't use but it like, in a food contact. Right, I understand that, but they've gotten over that problem in systems. Just, just the bottle bit. But like a recycled plastic fork that has contact with food, so how do we make a pot of recycled plastic fork? They're not. They're not, not recyclable. Not recyclable, yeah. but. Not recycled they, content that I'm aware of. It's bio-based. Recycled plate. It's bio-based. I've not seen recycled content plates. Huh. It's bio-based, it's compostable, all the claims that you see on there, but it's not from oh, recycled it's content. content. It doesn't say 50% PCR on it because it's a food contact material. So I think what they're looking for is a note on that one? Yeah. Increased mandate yeah. for recycled content? Mm -hmm. Yeah, either a con, yeah. a con or no FDA for contact restrictions. Or for the FDA guidance on that. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if I'm reading your comments, John. And yeah. one thing that's in here, right, uh, like line six maybe, uh, single use products that aren't recyclable are mistakenly put in a recycling where they can turn it stream. Um, so I just wondered, is this a sort of a ease of sorting by consumers that you were thinking of? Like that, you know, when you talk, or we've talked about wish cycling or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, is that what you were talking about? Or I didn't know if it was something we should be capturing in our comments or paper. I think there's a multitude of sources for that. For you know, either things mistakenly making it into the, the blue bin. Um, it's wish cycling. Uh, it's also, uh, well, mostly wish cycling. Uh, <laughs> but it's w whether it's with the carton, uh, you know, a carton which isn't recyclable, uh, a coffee cup, you know, it's paper. People look at it and say, oh, this is paper. Um, so there's, it's a, there's it's there's a lack of education. Carton recycling is 60% of the US, though. Um, no, Certainly not in Vermont. Uh, not, not in the Blue Bin. Not in Blue Bin. Right. Yeah. And I've seen that number from the Carton Council. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've seen that number. Okay. <laughs> I was asking. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, it's, it is a, it's a, you know, whether it's by design of the product or by the knowledge of the consumer, it, those items are making it into the Blue Bin. Um, or, it's keeping them out of the blue bin because they're not recyclable and they're in the landfill. So. Um, on your number three, pass 
some slash most of the cost of the management of the waste caused by single use products from manufacturers. So, mm -hmm. um, so we'll, that's an EPR. It is, yeah. yeah. And I think that, you know, the page, the one that we've been pointing to, I think we refined our definitions of EPR as we move through the system. Uh, but I think the one that's on page six, I believe, that um, includes eco-modulated fees, uh, includes expanding the bottle bill. Uh, it's, it's that integration. Because uh, they're both the bottle bill, the blue bin, they're both recycling systems. They're both waste management systems. Um, they both have advantages. One is ease. The other is an economic incentive. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I'm not at this point splitting hairs on, on which one, but. So is the, the one on the top of that page where it says eco-modulated fees, is that a, to be clear, and this is a question, should that be EPR program with eco-modulated fees? And that was that was going to be my comment when I was giving you the eye. <laughs> <laughs> you got through a circle. <laughs> because I feel that in looking at the two places where EPR is, it doesn't capture what my recommendation was, which was um, EPR for single-use products that's structured in a way that encourages single-use products to have a low carbon footprint, recycled content, be non-toxic and recyclable through eco-modulated fees. Mm -hmm. So I would like it, because okay. the other EPR one talks about costs, and it's not just about money, it's right. about all of those things. So I feel like we need to capture get that it somewhere. in this one. If John, um, you know, agrees, I think we're yes. on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. A uh, question: All those factors, life cycle weight, recyclability, recycled content; those are all competing factors. This is sometimes a, they are. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm just wondering from your I think that's perspective. A no for sure. It's a what? I'm sorry. Go I was just going to say, is it from your guys' perspective with the experience on the ground, do you have a, a penultimate from all those factors? If we're going to weight a, a particular factor, what's most important? I mean, if you're asking me, it would be I'm low less, carbon yeah. footprint, but not necessarily recyclability yeah. or recyclability. Okay. So it would drive us more towards films and plastics. That would be my, yeah, my perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not recyclability. I just said that's right. that's important. That but I think it's important think. to capture all those things and then have that discussion of, and, and have that as a note that all of those can't be achieved. Yeah. You know, they conflict with each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I, that's I, I think that's helpful uh, in context because yeah. we haven't had mm -hmm. that level of detail in discussion yet. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure from industry's perspective, you know, there are different materials and uses that are going to favor a film yeah. over a bottle, and others that are. Gonna Favorite bottle over a film. We put food waste into that just as a factor. It's mm -hmm. not lightweight. And it's if you know if we're going to mandate you know paper and that results in fifty percent greater food waste spoilers. It's a factor that should be weighed maybe in the modulated fees. Just throwing it out there. And carbon footprint. Is that so count a carbon footprint yet, or would we have to do an analysis? Well, on if that? you're yeah, if you're, if you're getting into the waste of food that you're going to waste because you're in not uh, using a package that preserves it more. Yeah. The greenhouse gas that goes into yeah, growing that vegetable is part of it. Is it built in there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should add another item that that includes and then list out what you're saying so we don't pass we don't lose that okay. to the conversation. So, so EPR program eco modulated fees to and then you had a series of so EPR, um, so for single use products, it's structured in a way that encourages them to have a low carbon footprint. And here, and this one? Um, so sure, we could, we could just add them to this one. Okay. As long as we're not overriding what someone else yeah. meant. Yeah, no. It's okay. And then, so, what do you want to use that here? That encourages low carbon footprint, recycled content. Non-toxic and recyclable. Okay. Um, 
Do you want to add a note, Andy, to reflect to what you were bringing up about that? If, if we all agree that food waste is, you know, is captured in low carbon footprint, then I'm fine with it staying there. If we ever got to a bill language out yes. of this piece, I would want to have food waste called out because I'm not sure it accounts for when somebody composts their food waste in their backyard and the emissions of methane. It's it just. Yeah. It's just the food waste on the production side. It's right. not yeah, that's, the that's exactly right. Yeah. Greenhouse yeah. gases. So maybe we put food waste in there just as a as right. a benchmark. Well, so right after. I mean, so it's food waste. It's electronic food waste, waste, isn't it? A lot of those things. Mm -hmm. Electronic waste. So if if you mail somebody a computer in a bubble wrapped envelope versus in a packaging that. Won't okay. Contain. Okay. The yeah. life cycle analysis of wrecking that computer over using more packaging. Yeah, but what I'm suggesting is, yeah, that's the front side, right? right? The stuff that cannot be used by the consumer. I'm talking about the consumer the opens it, mm -hmm. eats part of it, then waste the waste goes then to my compost bin and then emits meth methane and oh, carbon dioxide. I thought dioxide you were talking about way. not packaging something well enough so that the food is wasted. Well, there's both. There's both because okay. there's packaging that will continue to preserve it. So the, the squeeze out um, sour cream has got it, both preservation and extending the shelf life when the consumer has it. So instead of the consumer then tossing half the container into their compost bin, it, they can continue to use it for another month and a half. I've pushed it out, you know, a good two months. And, and <laughs> and you're still here. all about it. You know, <laughs> didn't visit, you know, I was, I was good digestionally, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, just to clarify a little bit more here, um, so that when we read this months later, we remember what we're yeah. talking about. It's for good news, The EPR program, can we say just for single-use products, because um, there are some recommendations for batteries and other things. So just want to make sure. Single-use packaging products. PPP. Um, Single-use products and, pa and printed materials. Thank you. Packaging and printed materials. Mm -hmm. Printed materials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have the note that captures this food thing? I don't think we do. Yeah, we um, um, well, Andy was talking about, is it assumed or not assumed, the food waste? Is food waste assumed or not assumed? Well, this is his comment yeah, about no, whether or not it's in the LCA. Food waste and, and composting assumed in LCA or yeah. not assumed. For the for the yeah, yeah. SUP. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Either way, so, yeah, thank you. under pros, should we add meets Act sixty nine? Um, Sounds like the shorthand. Yeah, right. what was that? Meets all statutory criteria of Act sixty nine, like we did in the other ones. Mm -hmm. Is there any of these that don't? <laughs> yeah. Well, Just some fashion by hand on one point or another. Um, there was a battery. Yeah, the battery one, I, I don't. Yeah. That, that's like its own working group. Right, there's right. a problem there. Um, we, we're going to debate whether or not everything meets every criteria or not. Yeah, and I'm not comfortable me. signing off on recommendations that say meets all the criteria and maybe doesn't, because we could spend hours like, oh, this doesn't meet that one and this meets that one. I think we right. can't just assume it meets all the criteria unless we were to sit there and go through each criteria and go, does it or doesn't it? And just so are you saying that generally or for this particular I'm saying one? that generally because, right. I mean, I'd argue mine meet the criteria too, right. but we didn't put that in mine or, or some of the others. So it's either... It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Like, you, and just from a group endorsement of... Right. We consider these recommendations and these don't meet all the criteria and these do. If we're going to do that, that that's fine. We got, you know... Uh, I'm flexible, but another month. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we can order dinner and I'll buy it. Yeah. Uh, but um, I just, I'm not sure I'm comfortable saying certain ones do meet all the criteria and others don't. If we really haven't discussed, it does imply that they don't. 
just don't yeah. have it. Well, then let's go through them. All. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, suggesting that. I'm just I'm kind of agreeing with you that yeah. that there is a that there's some that says something. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Well, I think it and that originated out of who was reporting out the point, and then yeah. that's yeah. instantly. Alive. I'm not saying there's any any dispersion of cast. I just oh, I yeah. didn't think I wasn't smart enough to think to put <laughs> some <laughs> criteria when I submitted these things in there. Right. <laughs> so one of the things that um, Andy brought up was the point that um, the, those goals are in conflict. Some of them are in conflict, when we didn't capture that in a note. So um, recycled content low carbon footprint, non-toxic and recyclable. Um, I think you could, could we put it in a note and just say um, modulated fee factors may be in conflict? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We might end up prioritizing them. And, mm -hmm. uh, right. John, do you have any more things you'd like to edit, add, whatever? No, my uh, last paragraph is about stem producer rock possibility, which we were just hashing out. Um, I think that covers it. Right. And I think we've heard from everybody, yes? Okay. All right. So, um, to your point, Andy, about um, <laughs> do we want to qualify each one of these as whether or not yeah. they meet those, I would say um, maybe we could, just for the record, we could add a note that says, not every one of these suggestions has been measured against all the criteria. So it's not an endorsement that, that uh, it's not, there's no implication that others don't, but without doing that sort of analysis, which I think we would make it meaningful, would take a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we should add a note to our table. Yeah. So and for the sure. ones where it's been serendipitously put in there that it meets all the criteria of that. 69. Are we keeping that language in there or are we removing that? You can put an asterisk there and put that note at the bottom. Well, let's, let's Claims not validated by, <laughs> the, <laughs> part, right. yeah. or by the working group. Yeah. So let's do that. Then when the first time it comes up, or on each instance, you can put an asterisk. But that, let's write what the asterisk represents it here in the yeah. box at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we can say um, that um, the majority of I, the working group. Well, we, yeah, I was going to, well, I'll try something out. We can help me get the, what, what we all mean by it, right? Um, I was thinking it, it really, uh, items lacking this uh, endorsement, or whatever we call it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call it an descriptor. Yeah. Uh, items at lacking this, uh, what kind of phrase? Pro, I mean, it's a characteristic. Yeah, characteristic. Thank you very much. Um, may or may not you know, satisfy all the criteria. Or not. May, or also, may also satisfy yes, all. Thank you. That's right. Act 68 criteria. Right. <laughs> Sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. Sorry. Just saying, we haven't evaluated them yet. So um, that way, we can leave them and not imply that other things won't measure up under all those criteria. It could be great. Flex a gem. Just to make sure the room understands, because I'm not quite sure I do. That seems almost backwards. The asterisk, when it's put on, satisfies. Uh, yeah, you're right. 
<laughs> we would have to put it on all the ones that don't contain. Yeah, I think so. So it needs to be worded differently. The other way around. Okay. Wait, can well, we use it yeah. yeah. Bring it back up. Yeah, please. Sure. To where? To the end. The note that, that you. The note you were just talking about. Yeah. The, oh, the one down below? Yeah. yeah the and the note that's, that that's the having one. a bumpy. Uh, this one? Production process. Okay. Yes, items with this characteristic may also may satisfy all axes. So take take out lacking and replace it with with items with yeah. this characteristic. No. Yeah, because yeah. it's going on the ones that, on. that already say they meet all right. the Right, it's going on the ones that say it meets okay. all the requirements. So items with how about we just put a, a, the note says something like, oh. items, not... Items without it's this identifier. Not, all the other ones aren't flagged. Um, uh, we could just remove it. Just, just remove it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That's the purpose of the group, right? Is yeah. to come up with recommendations and figure out if they meet the criteria. So, so, I have a suggestion. We've been going an hour and a half. Let's take our break. <laughs> and when we've had uh, 15 minutes of fresh air, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> the editorial solution will be come here. To, uh, yeah. So, let's start at uh, 10 past. We'll take a break for 15 minutes. <laughs> My Quran has kindly uh, reprinted it with the uh, changes we just made. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also wanted to just pause, you know, because as we've worked on these things, uh, or read them in the week in between, I know that uh, some people had uh, further thoughts or edits or anything like that. So while we're uh, still here tuning this up, this is, in a certain way, when we talk about the, our report more generally. So the report that we're sending on to the legislature is, we, have a, we got a skeleton version of it last time. I mean, the approval of contents was just sort of a sample from another report. Give us an idea of how we might fill in the blanks. Um, and We'll talk, Mike, we're ready to join us at the table in a little bit to help us walk through editing a thing sort of assembling the report. But um, rather than have it be recommendations that we're voting on as a group, let's get some of the, some of the points of, well, I'm fine on this piece, but not that piece. Or uh, I didn't want it ever to be that we had to cash out and take vote by vote, item by item, because it becomes a lot of overhead just managing the votes on each thing and i don't know how much more helpful it is to the legislature to receive something where we voted each piece through you know one by one by one so the sign off on the report uh, that from my point of view is just that as a group we worked we gathered this information together and it would be affirming that if you are feeling inclined i would just like the chance for people to work on something to sign on it, you know, as opposed to, well, the process ended and then I you know, it just sort of passed in it the night without any formal closure. So it'd be that we're putting together recommendations. We're not voting out the elements in there. So these are things for considerations that the legislature might address as they take up the same topic when they come back in January. Um, so that's the that's what you're, if you sign, you're affirming that you were part of the discussion, not that you agree with everything that's collected in our report. Because the other thing is the report is going to link back to our committee, um, our, our working group webpage, which I don't know the total number of pages in there. It's maybe it's over a thousand or something like that. We've received a lot of materials. We've had some, many PowerPoints. Um, so we're really assembling all that stuff as uh, kind of like a reference section that will be linked to from the report. So I would never assume everyone in the room would also agree with everything we heard uh, as testimony. Was it sometimes that variant? So that seems totally fine. Um, does that make it any clearer as to what it means to be signing the report? 
maybe a clarification. So this is going to be you know, the overview, the charge of the group, and the report as we've read it. And this is a recommendation. Would it be possible to put submitted recommendations because we didn't debate them all, or just to provide some of that context if these were collectively submitted by the group and discussed instead of just recommendations? Right. Um, well, and Michael has some language to suggest okay. as counsel about how to phrase it more artfully than I have so far. Mm -hmm. um, so we, right, we're, we're not endorsing each thing. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, all right, so Kathy, did you have comments about, uh, or anyone, but I was under the impression that you might have some comments, edits to what we've gathered today so far or maybe sometimes you ship them in other times mm -hmm. you're so shy that I have to ask well thank you I appreciate that <laughs> I've never categorized myself as shy but that's uh, it's, it's good that someone does um, <laughs> so I just kind of real quick we got almost like 18 or 20 recommendations that's a lot yes and so um, and, and I don't know how much time we have here but is it possible for this group to um, say these are the these are um, suggestions that we have that we want consideration of but of these we feel really strongly that um, and this is a question um, should the legislature pass legislation that is similar to that that Maine passed last year and what Maine did last year was they passed um, um, what they call the resolve that directed their DEP um, to um, further develop our proposal for EPR for printed materials. No, for packaging, I'm sorry, for, I misspoke for packaging. And so I didn't know, does this group feel strongly enough to make that a suggestion in this report or not? Being from Maine until we see what comes out from the department, which I understand there's still lots of questions. There will always be questions unless no, we I further know. explore I, it. No, agreed, agreed. Until we know how sort of the trajectory of that goes, I'm not sure I can commit to saying I'm going to go down the same path as me, just me personally. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I'm cognizant of DEP's time. Um, you guys have, I think, a couple times you've said, especially in, in these committee meetings, that you guys are um, very much overcommitted already. So my concern would be. Um, adding a, a significant lift on your plate is going to be tough to, to address, I think. Um, Unless other... You know, that's something I would have to certainly check in with upper management on before I can speak on whether or not um, DEC could make that commitment. Um, is there... Um, consensus or uh, willingness of this group to somehow want to commit to further exploring um, how to make improvements that address the five uh, uh, goals that are stated in Act 69. Maybe that's a better question, less specific question for this group. Or do we want to just leave it to the list of several, you know, all of these recommendations, which is a, that's, that's an acceptable option as well. I'm not sure I'm following what's the difference between those two. Well, I think one is, if, is, there, is there something more specific that we want to um, indicate to the legislature that this group recommends that be further explore? Or do we want to leave it to the legislature with the list of, you know, 18 or so different options. That's the question. Mm -hmm. well, I think, I guess from my perspective, um, you, you, you've kind of gone this far with the idea that we would present a list of options, alternatives, whatever the, mm -hmm. whatever the term is, and if you get into prioritizing even among those, then you're you're kind of getting into, well, it's a recommendation process and which one has the support and so right, forth. Right. So there's a challenge there where I, I probably could do that, but I, I don't, then you're going to have to go to each one. I don't think you yeah. can pick out one and say, can we all agree on this? Because then it becomes the one that everyone has agreed on and by the nature of it is, is prioritized above others. So that would be mm -hmm. my, I think 
my challenge and perhaps a challenge to the group. Mm -hmm. I, I do think it's because of the way this was put together, it, it is possible to, uh, a number of them have to do with EPR, for instance. You, you, it is possible to come up with fewer than 18 if one wanted to kind of go through this list and say, here, here are elements of EPR that, and, it, and because not all of them are the same, sometimes people take a different crack at aspects of an EPR program, mm -hmm. but it, it might be just clearer in the end, say, EPR that could have the following characteristics as one, as, as one kind of way to go here. But instead of 18, as though they're all distinct, there's really is quite a lot of overlap between the number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I, what I think I'm hearing, Kathy, is right now we're, we, we've done, we, 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 we've gotten lots of material, maybe mm -hmm. a thousand pages. Um, we've got 18 suggestions, uh, recommendations, but we're lacking an action step. And, and rather than, for me, uh, rather than, than the action step being we pursue what Maine did or we pursue what California did or, or we try to prioritize which ones we like best and, and want legislature to look at those first, an action step could clearly could 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 simply um, <clears throat> say it's the uh, recommendation of, of uh, the group that um, legislature investigate um, the various options that we've presented and others as they present themselves for the furtherance of, and then you and then you had you had a pretty good for the furtherance of reduction of single-use products in the state of Vermont. Uh, it, 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 this, uh, that, that, that seems, gee, I, you know, I always <clears throat> want to have an action step. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think we need one. And that particular one um, builds on what Kathy said, I think, and, and, but doesn't get specific. And we, we individually aren't endorsing any one of the particular ones in that particular statement. Um, only that the whole reason we did this was to present legislature with information in order to move this ball farther down the field. If you will. Um, so, well, I think, you know, some of the challenge comes out when I first made a quick table, I used the word recommendations for inclusion in the report. Um, and I think that word recommendation is hanging us up a little bit. If we called this collection of ideas, you know, items recommended for further consideration by the General Assembly um, in furtherance of the goals of Act 69, that's the action statement right there mm -hmm. for the headline mm -hmm. of, the, of the table. Even. Okay. Yeah, I love it. But, but I wonder if we can consolidate some of these because some of them mm -hmm. compete a little bit. So it seems confusing to get a statement that. I, you know, I, I don't know how other people, I'll oh, just be honest. <laughs> when I think about consolidating them, then I think we might end up. Not not sort of them out back and forth yeah. in a way that I don't know that we'll because we're not signing sort of off on saying this is the one to pursue. Um, I don't know how we'll how much we'll improve the this consolidation represents what I said. Yeah. Uh, I think the only way for consolidation is, is if something in particular is somebody's item here that they see would fit into another one and say right. it would be fine with that. So they want to, yeah. they want to move get their go of theirs and yeah, move right. mm -hmm. into yeah. it. Right. Right. So, I would say that, that that will come naturally in the committee process, um, yeah. the legislative committee yeah. process that that will take all 18 adults and, uh, and, and do something with it. I, for one, would like it. I suggest it stands. 
nice it is. So I'll, maybe I should repeat what I said. <laughs> <laughs> there. It says, item, I, I just wrote out, items recommended for further consideration by the General Assembly in furtherance of the goals of Act 69. In and there's only one way to make it just got a six point if we want to <laughs> really get a lot of um, in talking with uh, Council Michael Grady over break, did you have something you wanted to say about how we would frame this section? And stuff? I think you could add a paragraph right below the title of the table that says all of the proposals were proposed in furtherance or to address uh -huh. one of the goals of Act 69. Uh, there is committee discussion about whether certain proposals meet all or some um, but they were all intended to address the goal. So you no longer have the asterisk issue, you can pull the asterisk out. You don't necessarily need to have that each, some of them meet all of the goals. They're all intended to meet one or some of the goals. Um, so you don't have to argue about where the asterisk goes. Yeah. I like that idea, anyone else? All those in favor, we can take one vote until accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, and then we don't write. So then in the table itself, the instances that say meets all the statutory criteria at 69 would all go away. Those would all go away. And go ahead and sit from the outset. So we, if more, if more. we do that, then it looks like there's no pros for some of those items because we didn't like articulate any other um, positive aspect of them. No. Right? That's true. We stopped enumerating things because we said it checks all the boxes. Right. So I would just say if you take it out, you've got to put something in, in mm -hmm. this place. That, otherwise, it looks like it doesn't have any pros. So we have a chance to, for those that submitted it, because they're, they're, you know, I think one or two that I submitted that I had jotted down pros that I don't think I yelled out loud enough on the, on the, on the call last week. Um, I mean, if we had a chance to edit those, we could go in and put some pros back in, and then uh, as soon as there's going to be a review process, right, with, with looking at the columns. Yeah. And the one thing is, right, so we don't want to have everyone here who offered up their comments at the same time. So um, let's think about this. I don't, want to, I don't want a review process to sort of spin forever, but um, yeah. and it will be easier for us to have a little conversation about adding things back in if we're all here. Um, we offer to do by mm -hmm. sending the document around. Mm -hmm. um, Well, if we wanted to minimize the review process, could we keep in where it already states, meets all the statutory criteria of Act 69, but at the beginning, add the paragraph that Mike was suggesting at the top, so, so that the reader knows that every suggestion meets at least one of the statutory um, criteria. And this is just for consideration. Yeah, but well, I mean, I've got two of mine that don't have any pros either that I would okay. say. Well, we could, we could mm -hmm. amend that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Uh, okay, so for consumer education on contamination, I would say yeah. improve material screens for pros. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Right, it's at the top of the... Uh, bottom of page six. Oh, yeah. I did hear you on the no on consolidation, but isn't that line the same as increased consumer education motivation to recycle? This category and this category, couldn't those be combined? Uh, well, that top one's not mine, so. Increased consumer education motivation to recycle on page three. Yeah, that wasn't nice. Right. Yeah. Is that, can that be the same as consumer education or contamination? Well, it's not just on contamination. It's, well, it's two separate topics. Two separate topics. But it's all under the heading of consumer education. Well, if we're if we're gonna get that technical, then we can go back to. Consolidate all EPR suggestions as well. I mean, we're gonna. It's, I'm. I wasn't talking about just contamination. Right. We need consumer education. They need to understand. Consumers need to understand the whole system. Yeah. So it's not just on contamination. I agree. I see. I just consumer education. So why don't we just edit these ones that are lacking pros, and then we'll. Um, when this gets taken back up again, there'll be a chance for a lot more conversation. But so uh, the one that's right under avoids avoid increases in consumer prices. So that one there, increase consumer education, comma motivation to recycle. That's yours, right, Andy? No, that's not okay. Sorry, Aaron. Do you want to spell out what the uh, pros are from your point of view? We'll get it while we're here. We're understanding there would be increased. Recyclables going to dispose of. So increase recycling, less material to the okay. Less material to the landfill. Oh, I think she During wants the it in the next box down, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. So funding and stakeholders was meant to address who who's taking on that work, correct? I mean, is the state going to be doing it, or is it the store, or is it the? Um, I think that all stakeholders should be participating in that education. I think that's what we think, Jen. That was your question. Was, who's paying for it? So it would be all stakeholders. It would be manufacturers, um, retailers, producers. So then let's turn that into a statement rather than just questions. So sure. all stakeholders should participate. In consumer education. And you were actually a little more explicit, so there were Manufacturers. Um, so after, yeah, manufacturers, retailers, Like the waste, waste industry and the waste industry. Um, you know, and the state. Okay. Okay. Um, was avoid increases in consumer prices yours? That was mine as well. Okay. Um, there'll be a reduction in the potential of Get more landfill items for less money. That was levity. <laughs> <laughs> I picked that up. <laughs> All right, so those are your two. They didn't have any. Uh, Andy, where is uh, the one you have put in? Uh, so that was, let's see, 
consumer education and contamination. Yes. This one right there, yeah. And I just put improved material streams. Improved? Or improved recycled material streams. And I would say we, if we're going to do this for ours, we probably should do it for the ones that just say it meets all statutory criteria for 69 as well. Because there's some criteria around costs and benefits that we haven't really talked about, so I'm not sure I can say it meets that criteria from mm -hmm. my perspective. So, um, Well, so this all came from individuals. I'm wondering, does it... Uh, to meet the other people's work, yeah. Well, does it uh, create enough? Is it a, can we finesse it by saying proposer believes? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. No? Yeah. Proposer? Well, that's true for everything. Right. I just mean, otherwise, we're going to have to go through A through E. But that could go in my, you know, O'Grady's. Initial paragraph, something about that. And, and okay. you're talking about the all the pros and the cons. Yeah. Really are mm -hmm. those are those. We haven't been disputing these. Right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, How about let me see another way of. Um, Can we have the folks that suggested those fill them in and make it complete? I mean, because we're not disputing any of these, right? So it feels a little bit like. You, if you didn't do your homework and write out a pro, because I didn't either, like right. I didn't. So that's why we're filled, we filled mine in, but then we need to have somebody write it in. And if you can't all collectively write it, then whoever wrote it the first time should write it. Explicit in saying you should support this. Right. Where we all believe in, in our recommendations. Right. So right. That dismisses the ones that mm -hmm. we put that in don't, don't say, say it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that because, again, like Andy and, and Paul said, nobody is disputing any of our pros. So if the people that have um, said it meets all statutory criteria, if they can send it along, you know, Mike can yeah. just include, whatever Mike can include it in the. In to be clear, because I want to make sure I understand what we're talking about, my understanding is those five criteria that's in the beginning of the charge for this working group. So it's to reduce the use of single-use products, reduce the environmental impacts of single-use products, improve the statewide management of these materials, divert them from the landfill, and protect and prevent contamination of natural resources. I mean, and I think when I saw that for the first time it was mentioned for EPR, I did agree that it met all five of those. I'm not sure I did. But I, you can write that. But, um, so EPR was one of the items that I had suggested, and are we then going to be debating people's suggested codes? Yeah, and I'm not really, yeah, I'm looking for a solution that doesn't have us uh, try to test every uh, item on the left against all five criteria. Um, and, uh, you know, this was, at the time, a working shorthand for saying, oh, well, there's five things we're trying to address, and we think it addresses all five. So, you know, another way of phrasing it, a little less assertive, is to say, um, it's comprehensive or something like that. It doesn't really get us out of the fix of appearing to uh, have a stronger statement about some than others. So. Well, it would appear to me that Michael's, and you know, I'm just going to call it a disclaimer, Covers these kinds of, of concerns that we're talking about. Uh, the reality or is this that good or both? No, we don't all agree about individual about every one of these things or any one particular concern. I think that covered that. If the concern 
concern is the ones that we've got labeled as pros meet all statutory criteria of Act 69. The concern I'm hearing, and it could be a reason, and, and, and it is in fact maybe a reasonable, no, it is in fact a concern for us to consider, that that elevates that particular item um, for legislature when they consider it. And, and, and I, so I'm going to go back to um, the committee process in legislature when we get all of these um, items. Um, we're going to, there will be people who say, wait a minute, this doesn't even come close to meeting any of the act or any of the requirements. And others will say, well, actually it meets all of them. And so I guess maybe I'd suggest either the, we can agree that the, the disclaimer that Michael's writing gets us out of this situation. Um, and if we don't think it gets us out of the specific one where we do say the various ones of us have said meets all the statutory requirements. Um, uh, I, I, well, what, I'm not sure what my action step here is then. But my action step, I guess, would be um, we agree that the disclaimer will take care of this issue. Okay. Question, we're only, we only have two that the only pro is meets all statutory criteria. I think there was some good things. Yeah, no, I, I know. Could we allow Jen to just... They're five. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only. But that is the only thing. I mean, it's li it's in. It's in. It, it's also used in the other. But there are other pros on the other ones, right? But the, there's only one where there's nothing but that. There's three. Okay. Three. okay. So, but when when people suggested using that, they were thinking about reduction of the of the material itself, um, improving, you know, decreasing the amount of disposal, improving the management. So if we remove that, what do we replace it with? I think leaving it blank is not fair to the I'm not suggesting that it's blank. I'm suggesting you have the proposer fill it in. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's very clear to say that so insurer manufacturers are bearing costs. Right. That that meets all statutory requirements based on what I'm reading here. Right. 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 I don't think there's there, there's a connection there. So no, you would. I would say that it relieves the cost of, you know, of the consumer. Of the consumer and recycling, mm -hmm. it relieves the cost of the recycling system. Is right. the direct right. pro of that? I think it's, it's not improving statewide management of single-use products. That comment. Right. So I don't think it's maybe fair to say that it meets all the requirements if it. Is it connecting there? This one does. <laughs> so, this one does. To, to build off of Representative McCauley's comments, yep. um, we allow the committee process to happen. The committee is going to weigh the pros and cons. So, what if we remove the pros and cons column? And we can leave the notes column. And or the could, committee can decide the pros and cons themselves. Could we include them all as notes? Right. Move them all. Over Move them all the notes because then it lists and then tag pros and cons. I mean, we no, just <coughs> put everything as a note instead, instead of okay. a pro or a con. Okay, yeah, because the of them are like, yeah. I th I think it's helpful to have yeah. pros and cons. I did too. Right. I, I think, think we'll all be in front of this committee. <laughs> so <laughs> depending on the pros and cons, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so yeah, interested in seeing this document again in my own lifetime. <laughs> Uh, in another room. So how about, you know, this, this group knows plenty about all these things. So rather than cash them all out, let's just, uh, there's only five. Why don't we, we are not aiming for a comprehensive, let's pick the most, uh, the, the most compelling reasons we can think of for the pro columns and just put them in a few. We don't have to come up with A through E, uh, we can just say, amongst the things you'll consider are, um, some may be, uh, for instance, the very first one, reduction in ways of consumer's size by a date certain. Um, I think I actually said increases clarity uh, of timeline. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe I take the timeline for action. Uh, well, that would definitely do A, reduce the single use, use of single use products, right? Right. So let's add that one in. Okay. Reduces volume. Mm -hmm. what reduces volume? Volume of single use products. Okay. So, Is that right? Yeah. Um, Am I on the right one? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Reduces volume of oh. single use products. Yeah, and does it re does it reduce the environmental impacts? Yes. Okay, I'm just been <laughs> accused of being <laughs> presumptuous. <laughs> so. I like this process. <laughs> and try. Environmental impacts. <laughs> yes. Um, improves uh, management of systems. Yes. Divert it from disposal? I would say yes if we're not allowing it anymore. How does it improve management of systems? Less volume. Yeah. If, if you're not allowing the use of certain single-use products by a certain date, then they're not there to have to be managed. So you wouldn't get it in your recycle stream. Because elimination is an improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Reduction is always the best. Top of the pyramid. Absolutely. I understand your point. I wouldn't argue that if you wanted to, but uh, I, I, either way, it doesn't yeah. really matter as long as you get right. these other things as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I think a pro on that one is goal oriented, mm -hmm. what, which we all mean. Mm -hmm. Measurable. Same goal. Right? Mm -hmm. I date And does it do anything to prevent um, contamination of natural resources? Yeah. You can certainly make that argument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So E. So that again. Um, prevents contamination of natural resources. Or re I would say reduces. Reduces yeah. contamination. Yeah. 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 Thank you. But there's others we want. So. I'm, I'm presuming. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So, one possibility is that you select all those, copy them, paste <laughs> <laughs> them in the next block, and, and then, we can, the day, and then yeah. we can edit them. We mm -hmm. might yeah. say, oh, we'll yeah. take something That's out. It. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, will, it will give us a way to move our start. way along. Yeah. Copy all of these and then replace the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in the I next one. Let's go to another block. Yeah. Right below. Yeah. 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 So that's the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't go away. To do these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, anything we want to inject. So, so which one is this? Bands. So these are just bands on it, not an EPR for them, just band. I think you eliminate mm -hmm. goal oriented, it's not really the same. For the same reason, yeah. the system works better with less problems to deal with. Diversion, measurable. Uh, okay. On to the next. We're going to copy these. But no, no, I'd say the original list because the original list had all of them in it. You, you, you. <laughs> It won't let you drag through. Yeah, it, it will, but it will. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Doesn't reduce volume. Doesn't reduce volume. 
I wouldn't say it does. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily reduce environmental impact. And the first one, um, that was really a yeah. planning one, so let's take that one off. It's not goal oriented. I would say that it does reduce environmental impacts because it has the eco modulated mm -hmm. schedule over in notes. It improves management of the systems as well. Because it'll, over time, it'll become more efficient. Your eco is actually on another one, though. Is that right? I, I know, but I would, I would not agree that it doesn't reduce environmental mm -hmm. impacts. Well, we don't know what manufacturers are using as an alternative. Well, it says eco-modulated schedule, and the purpose of the eco-modulated schedule is to um, give preference to producers for um, producing materials that are less and are more environmental. So then, can that one be uh, combined with the other one? The only have? reason why I wouldn't want it combined is because this one has a note on expanding the bottle bill. That's not mine, and I don't want to take that out of there because that is somebody else's suggestion under the notes. Well, I was, it, it's a fair point, and there isn't actually one. It just talks about expanding the bottle bill. Senator Bray, you had on the, on the last page, I don't want to divert attention from this right now, but you, you kind of talk about expanding the bottle bill to glass, but that doesn't even capture all of what Warren's initial suggestion had been, so it might make sense to just separate out one. There is um, a line just to increase the bottle bill. The one for the 15 cents. It's the last one. So, oh, the yes, increase, you could or, take it out. increase the deposit on the bottle bill, but oh, Senator Brains right. above that talks about glass only. Oh, so just change it to. Oh. Suggestion was, was the expansion of the scope of the bottle bill beyond glass and an increase in the deposit. So, I think it's a fair point. You take that note out of here and make and it its own thing, and that's if yeah. you're good with that. Sure. As a proposer, and you're a fellow proposer, you want to, you're willing to edit that way. That seems like a, a useful thing. Yeah. It's a little more compact. So what we would do is keep the other EPR one because we worked on that earlier today, yeah. mm -hmm. and move that the pros into the other one. So move these pros. Yeah. Well, the down the into the whole list actually would be printed to me. The whole list. Not right? that. The, the one with the environmental. The original list yeah. that you had above. That's hard for you. Well, I still get a copy. Oh, yeah, you have it in your copy. I still have a copy, yeah. And then, and then move that down to. So there's, it oh. has me at 169 in it. So yes, that's good. I did it as well. Yeah. That one? Right. Mm -hmm. So in addition to or in place of? In place of me. In place of just that one. So now let's pop back up to the one we were editing. Well, we're getting close. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so ensuring manufacturers are paying full cost doesn't. Uh, um, Seems like a characteristic. I think you can delete system. this now. Right. I think it's been captured thing. in yeah. the other one. Yeah. And then we, and you want one for expanding the bottle. Right. Yeah, that's right. What we, I think the notes. The touchpad is messing me up on this computer. So. And and then, the the, the notes are in it. Just keep expanding bottle bill to cover water, wine, and that becomes the item. Yeah. This becomes yeah. the one. <laughs> this one becomes the right. item. Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then this goes away. Yep. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Eco modulated scheduling is still there. Yeah, that is. And EPR. And, and that one. Yeah. And all of all those. Notes, yeah. Go on. Go on. No. Okay. Yeah. So, now, we need a can, I, can I just suggest, though, that among the pros, it's not, uh, those may all apply, but it's also a higher quality of recycled right. material, which is. Which improves the marketability of the higher quality recycled material. Uh, no, 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 
So the, uh, the improves management of systems. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure I agree with that one. Yeah. And then um, is it cool? the, the measurable is difficult because of the non transparency of the bottom. I don't mind eliminating uh, both of those. It's right. Go and measure yeah. them. Don't really seem to fit. But don't you want to increase the stream that's going into the redemption centers? And that would be. We need to fix the whole system, though. And just in and that's that that. the redemption fee yeah. isn't going to fix the system itself. Should we have a note yeah. that the. Um, the sorts at redemption right. centers and retailers needs to be addressed. Yes. Well, there is one. Well, the <laughs> towards the end, increased deposit uh, redemption of bottle bill, fifteen cents review and correct inefficiencies in system. Yeah, but that's increasing the deposit. This is oh, okay. expanding. Well, so, it's an increased deposit, deposit, deposit. Maybe we yeah. Um, maybe well, this one goes away. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to combine mine. I still stand yeah. by what right, I say, which right. is the test study that's happening right now. That if people do it for 15 cents, they don't do it for five. So why go to 10? But I'm fine with consolidating. So change mine to be 10 cents. Or, 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 or would yours, yours. Would yours right. fit in this one? Right. So make sure it's all put correct in combine them. Yeah. Cor correct inefficiencies yeah. in system. Okay. Yeah. So not on that last one. Yep. Okay. So, like, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't want to serve the group and not hinder your discussion by any means. So, this one here. Mm -hmm. So right, we so would review and correct inefficiencies in systems. Copies and paste yeah. to the other one. Yeah. Yeah. As a note, right? Or as no, a, as a as an item. item. Mm -hmm. oh, Right. As an addition to the item? Yeah. Yeah. And to that matter, you could you could say address, uh, encourage um, more commingling. I mean, you could either put it as a note yeah. or part of the it. Just somewhere it needs to be noticed. You know, increase commingling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either increase commingling or decrease sorts. I don't care how you say it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good for you to, as a you know, I mean, I think if we, that's, a, that's one strategy that would help, but someone might bring up something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then under oh. notes, restaurant redemption. Right. That's the other piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And through. Mm -hmm. and Somehow it's going to address fraud. Mm -hmm. right, that's uh, a great one. Great yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. And then cons um, potentially increase uh, recycling, the cost for a recycling system. The curbside? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Curbside. Like that? Or. Well, it's not all curbside. Um, yeah, drop off. Curbside. Blue yeah, bin? Municipal. Blue bin recycling? Blue bin? You get the idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. up and grab the full list again. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll edit it down. It starts, but it starts with 
One more up. One more. One more. Thank you. Yeah. I think. Yes. Because it straddled the page. Yeah. Be. Remember? Yeah. Now we're going to go back down. To the the next time you yeah. see meets all the um, criteria of activity. And then uh, if you can take off increases clarity by time on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Not part of that one. Well, General A for B. All right. Yeah. yeah. Recycle content and it won't reduce the volume of some of the products. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Switching one container for yeah. the other. You're you're promoting the use of recycled content or um, reducing the use of virgin material. So it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate it's the well. bottle, it just changes the bottle into. Mm -hmm. right. I, I yeah. Yeah. The, the, the next one on the bottle right. reduces it's the better impact because right. you're using yeah. less virgin Maybe. material. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> LCA will be yeah. there. Yeah. Right? So, so, yeah, I would have that, I mean, if you want to just leave that, that's fine. But I think I would add one about promoting circular economy uh, because that's that's is just a goal of, unto itself here, or a, a benefit of itself. Yeah, and it benefits the um, mm -hmm. the recycling system yeah. by creating demand. Does it help with? Um, Split off. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine now. Okay, so we're yeah. deleting that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Doesn't improve management of systems. Mm. Doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. This diversion from disposal doesn't do any of that either. Um, I would argue that because um, there would be more incentive to recycle, collect through recycling those materials so okay, because of the good. demand for recycled content. Yeah. For a con here, we do need to put um, manipulates the marketplace for resins. It, it may. I've been told at least that Poland Spring switched to 50% PCR. They would eat the entire supply of PCR east of the Little Rockies, so it's going to manipulate the, the market. It's manipulate the market? market. If we, if we I would say suck up the market. Yeah. Yeah, Is that a bad thing? But, 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Mm. Well, but it's a, it's a con in the sense that, that if you're going to legislate that, if you're going to put in statute, all beverage bottles must meet 50% recycled content, and suddenly your bottle goes from $1.50 to $6 because you're simply chasing, or you just simply can't meet the supply, right? And then you, you get into penalties. It's going to manipulate the market. And that's the, that's the stated goal, but the con is that it manipulates the market, right? Well, it increases consumer costs, potentially. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. Cost, but, it, but, it, but it, yeah, it, it, it causes change in the marketplace. Can we say it may disrupt the market, or? Alter, I mean, I'm just, I think I alter, 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 alter would be better. That way we don't have to prejudge how okay. it's going to It's just a negative connotation. Manipulate? No, no, no. Okay, sure. <laughs> alter, distort. I'm not saying wrote it. I thought Angie would want it to be adversely altered. Well, it, it I mean, if it's a con, it, it could adversely. I mean, yeah, yeah. it could put some of the small bottlers out of business. Some of the small, some of the small water, bottled water folks. They could either pay a penalty, right, and, and, or they can't afford the bottles anymore. Like, or maybe we would use 
refillable. Even if we put them out of business altogether. So let's, yeah. let's yeah. not use plastic <laughs> bottles or bottled water for an example. Let's, yeah. like, let's identify like specialty food producers. And then that is, we might put specialty food producers out of business as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Not just bottled water. Sure. Thank you. Does it uh, help with diversion from disposal? <laughs> Yes, because you could have containers that are disposed now, but because they'll be valued, they'll be more incentive to put them in the recycling stream. Okay. Um, yeah. Would it be better to just put incentive to incentive against disposal versus diversion? Yeah. yeah. Incentive against? Yeah. Incentive to reduce disposal. Oriented and measurable, those, well, they're, they're, I mean, we're, everything up here is goal oriented, right? I would definitely say it's measurable. Right, right. But measurable, because we would, mm -hmm. there would be a specification. Yeah, yeah, there would be. Okay. So is goal oriented going? It's fine. Yeah. Oh, there's something else. Yep. Uh, reduces contamination at food sources. Well, by reducing uh, the use of virgin materials, I think there's a direct connection yes. there. Yes, okay. that's um, I thought that that captured the virgin material in number one. When I think about the contamination of natural resources, I'm thinking of litter and the microplastics. And I don't think it reduces that because, um, you know, it doesn't matter if the plastic bottle is out of recycled plastic or not. If it gets out in the environment, it's going to break down into microplastics. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't dispute that point, but I think reducing the contamination of natural resources might have to do with fracking and so forth. You, there's less uh, fracking involved in creating a bottle that's made of 50% okay, recycled content. True. That's a good point. But no, that not if, if we're relating, because we copied these from the yeah. charges, yeah. and it specifically says prevent contamination of natural resources by discarded single use products. Right. So, so it could be a slight. Alteration. Yes, it reduces pollution. Well, yeah, it reduces environmental impacts already. Yeah. Oh, I mean, all safe. right, sorry then. Well, that's fine. Yeah. That, you can eliminate it. Right. Okay. <laughs> I was like, no, you may say reduces the use of virgin uh -huh. materials and notes. Yeah. Reduces yeah, always yeah, thank you. Thank reduces you. Reduces, use reduces the use virgin of virgin materials. Virgin materials? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that was our Ooh. last instance of You guys do that. Call. So are we going to give um, Say that. Mike um, the ability to just go in here and clean things up a little bit? Just because some of these statements don't <laughs> really say <laughs> this Michael or Mike. <laughs> Because like the one we were just on, it was an increased mandate. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about increasing, mandating to increase recycled content, mm -hmm. right? So, kind so of going these and clear, little picky things meant. that we don't necessarily yeah. have to wordsmith as a committee. I don't want to add Scrivener improvements. Well, I get this group. Um, high marks for there was no weapons were brandished <laughs> during a group edit process, which is probably one of the most challenging things you can do with people in the work. So. No one member did leave the room briefly. <laughs> for oxygen. Just, right. So, um, any other uh, notes on the? Uh, I think we we spelled out what was missing or. I have a couple of clarifications that I would like to just um, bring up. Okay. If we start at the top of the document, it says no standard ASTM. And this was when Andy was on the phone and we were talking about compostable versus recyclable, I think. And there, it, it's not clear here, but there is an ASTM standard for compostable. So this is biodegradable in the environment was the comment, I think. Okay. Where, but where are we? It's top of the page, very, very top of the page. Thank you. Oh, this one. Gotcha. Okay. So this is yeah. We were debating. I think does the if it doesn't 
biodegrade in the environment, right? That was kind of your point. Mm -hmm. You wanted it to, if it's littered, to right. disappear. Naturally. Naturally de de mm -hmm. degrade. If not, it's going to be banned under, I think, the recommendation. And so my... Oh. Just, no. So what I was saying is that there is a compostability standard, ASTM, and... I agree, yeah, there's compostability. I think he's trying to you know, remind me, I was trying to say, there's no standard for uh, natural decomposition. That's it, right. yeah. Okay. Not composting, but under natural ambient. Okay. All right, so if we want to keep the note, either way, I just want it to be made clear that there's no standard for natural decomposition, but there is a, an ASTM standard mm -hmm. for compostability. Yeah. We don't even yes. use ASTM in that comment you're on right now. Yep, just leave it like that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then down on the next recommendation, um, discontinue integrate bottle redemption and mm -hmm. replace with EPR for printed materials and writing. I'm not sure why we got into the um, percentages at the MRF, but they they don't match the percentages that I have for our MRF. So if we want to keep that comment, the 40, 20, 20, 20, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that helps the reader in this particular recommendation. But if we do want to keep it, I would say that um, my numbers are quite a bit different. Yeah. So and how about yours, Kim? Do you know? We have a 20% residue. No. No. Okay. No, we don't. So these are facility specific, so let's not put that. Okay. Yeah. Take the whole thing out? Yeah. Okay. Um, before we move on, can I jump in? Are you done with this one? Mm -hmm. um, for a con, can we include um, cost, of uh, cost of consumer increases, but also it essentially puts over 50 redemption centers out of business? To eliminate the bottle bill? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's redemption centers? Since yeah. you should say if bottle bill is eliminated because there is a slash integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it is a confusing one. So. Yeah. so the cost to consumers, I, I am not convinced that will increase because um, consumers are paying a lot in Vermont right now to recycle. It will be a different cost, but I'm not sure it will be an increase. Yes. Cost. I'm not convinced of that. I would agree with that, but it, it comes out in a disclaimer. <laughs> we have to remember there's a handling fee, too, mm -hmm. on top of the five yeah, right. or ten, fifteen cents. Oh, that, will fee. that will go away. Yeah. Right. Well, if it's discontinued, only, only but. Is that what you mean? Well, what I mean. Okay, okay, so how about if we put a note? Uh, you know, it just says. Impact consumer prices should be assessed. Yeah, I mean, sure. I'm sure the legislature will be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. and, then, okay. and then should we, should we delete that one? Yeah. What does successful U.S. model mean? Well, yeah, so I was going to say, it yeah, was a half a sentence. <laughs> I think it was developed. Um, the cost hat was dropped. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah. why we're getting online? I think it got dropped and then it didn't get replaced, and we got onto something else. And exactly. I lost it. So we looked at models, but we. So we, we know this part. So what are we doing with that? Should be developed. Developed. Just developed. Okay. Like that? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, so keep going to contaminants of emerging concern. And this comes into the Michael edits right there. Right there. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't sure what that recommendation was anymore. It was just a statement. It's just a thing. There are, so, so is this span upstream work? Uh, I mean, it could be. It could be upstream and downstream. Right. So Kim, you were the one that brought this up, I think, the contaminants of emerging concern. Mm -hmm. What action? What? What do you mean by contam? What do you want done with contaminants of emerging concern? Like, what was your recommendation? Reduce exposure to or ban them from being put in products. It's more the yeah. It's more the food packaging. PFAS? Yeah. And recently, we just learned 1,4-dioxin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um... Sounds like a ban, right? Well, right, yeah. 
our yeah. conversation, was it something like, why does it have to fall to the, the solid waste handler in the right. end when right. it was created way upstream? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does that does that sounds like uh, so eliminate mm -hmm. or ban or ban products that contain toxic additives, etc. Yeah. Et Especially if they're touching your food. Yeah. Uh, toxic additives in single-use products. Is that yes? That contain no ban. Uh, I think it's ban toxic additives in single-use products. Would that capture it? Yeah. Yeah. I think yes. Yeah, food packaging, I prefer to say. Yeah, or is it food service? Mm -hmm. Such as packaging, right? Food service and food both, yes. packaging. Both, yes. Both. Yeah. And we have something food on the first content. page that's food content. very similar to this. It's banned food packaging that contains, and it only yes. said PFAS, but maybe we should PFAS and other toxins. And other, yeah. 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 <laughs> emerging, uh, you may not want lead okay. or you know, something that might not be categorized as an emerging contaminant, but that's where right. I want the toxins. Mm -hmm. Isn't the toxic clearinghouse um, cover some of those things? Yeah. Yeah. So. Banned toxic additives in food packaging. In okay. food packaging. Mm -hmm. In food service, I would say. So we, we'll give you all right instead of using packaging um, because utensils aren't packaging. Right. That's what he was That's no. what he's saying. Service. And, and, food and service. service. And food service yeah. items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. How is that different than one? Okay, so my, okay, so perhaps with the very first item keep this the way it is because it's very complete. Go up to the very first item and maybe we can just delete the, the last part of the item one. It says and food packaging that contains PFAS. Right. Just the same right. right. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Great. keep keep the rest of that one the same. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, so are we combining those? Sorry. No. no. Okay. No, we just Getting rid of some redundancy. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. The department, the redundancy department. Great. Okay. Um, so I think this is my last comment. Um, down to the hotel sh shampoo one. Um, ban single use food packaging. Um, so my question was, do we want to clarify whoever made this suggestion? There's single use food packaging and then there's single use packaging. And I was wondering if, because it's associated with hotel shampoos, which is just packaging. So, or, or define what single-use food packaging is, like, is it include um, the serviceware that we were just talking about? So, it just, single-use food packaging, so if, if I buy a can of soup, mm -hmm. that can is a single-use food packaging, or is this yeah. a ban on cans containing soup? <laughs> That's what needs to be clarified here. Yeah. We only debated, I think, the hotel part. That's a great question. Or it's just a chicken. I gotta bring my own can now? Yes. Bulk soup with me. Co op. What if we it take out the single use food packaging phrase? Yeah. Oh, right, right. I don't know who suggested this. this one and, and what that obviously had something in mind. Yeah. I think um, maybe it was food Jim service. It. It, was, it was Lauren. Yeah, it was Lauren's yeah. right. proposal was, initially, yeah. and I think we were. She probably was looking at Berkeley. Um, there are those um, municipal ordinances that have taken on single use. It's, food, it's really it's food service. Uh, right. 
Seattle, yeah. Seattle. Seattle, Seattle, maybe as well. Yeah. So what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what are they banning all single use packaging or just the non recycled I'd have to look at it, honestly. Yeah. Mike, you may recall, but uh, it's, it's content specific. Mm -hmm. It's what it's made out of, so. It's plastic, I right. believe. Yeah. They're looking at, they're specifically looking at plastic. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know what. So they don't ban, plastic. like, bamboo. Right. Uh -huh. right. So everything you buy in the grocery store, right? I think it's it's focused on food establishments. But yeah, for state and municipal? Right. No, the state the the packaged water is actually the use of essentially government funds to purchase bottled water. Uh -huh. The single serve bottled water. Even with emergency. But I think that's why it says in the notes. It, yeah. it does. It seems uh, like that's three different pots. Yeah. Package yeah. yeah. water for state municipal. So tell me about this. Or the period that it's bottles. right here. It's con single use food packaging. Contact with plastics and chemicals added to plastics and consumer products is a pathway for exposure to toxic chemicals. So it's kind of related to what I said. Yeah. yeah. So, right. So should plastic be put in between ban? I think that would at least make it a little clearer. Plastic food packaging. Or could it be under yours? Can, yeah. Could we go back to what yours was? If that was her intent. Yeah. So, yeah, so we just know. eliminate single use food packaging from this one and keep everything else, but then your client would cover it. Right. right. Yeah. So if we delete that. Yes. That. Yeah. Okay. But go up. Pretty minor. <laughs> but go ahead. Does that work it's, it's for you, Paul, or was that you think well, that I, was I, the intent of her? I think so. I might say I, I think we all understand what we mean by banned hotel shampoo bottles, but yeah. really it's single use toiletries. 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 Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. lotion. Yeah. California yeah. calls it personal care product. Personal care, yeah. single oh. use personal care yeah. products in yeah. hotels. Yeah. And, and they're only banned in the room yeah. or in the bathroom. You can go to the front lobby and get <laughs> Oh, in case you didn't bring it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you might have, have us a note that you could exempt smaller. Um, yeah, they do. California has tiering. Yeah, just right. How large is the hotel? Well, we can <laughs> <California, laughs> <California, laughs> exempt hotels with fewer than 500 rooms or something. And, uh, I think uh, it should not work pretty well. Oh, five? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not it's exaggerating. It phases based on the size of the yeah. hotel. Yeah. 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 So smaller ones have another year. And, yeah. I and saw, it's like 2024. That's a long way I yes, think the, like the, the, <laughs> the second half of this packaged water for state and municipal, what that means is a banned use of uh, um, public yeah. dollars for um, single serve water bottles. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the point there. Well, not necessarily single serve, um, the five gallon jugs yeah. as well. Uh, you well, you could, although you can fill up. I mean, That's I think the point can. was you want to get rid of the 16 ounce or whatever. Well, we certainly do, but um, I, I, I would like I. I was also considering in this that, um, for instance, we made the switch here in the state house. We aren't getting these five gallon jugs anymore. We did an alternative, and um, uh, you, tap water. Yeah, that's better. I mean, that's, I, I don't think she would object. Okay. So is that, is that what you were saying? Uh, just kind of clarify the personal care products because you don't want to include feminine products in that category. Oh, yeah. Right. So shampoo, kind of um, soap, conditioner, any other product you can put on your skin. Body and any product you can put on your skin. Yeah. Uh, if you so, we all know. Uh, I don't know. Okay. 
pick this up in testimony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, can I just oh, see the next one oh, down? I just <laughs> want to re get a reminder where we ended up on this. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> see? Yeah. Oh, Wait a minute. <laughs> Um, your hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh, okay. I lost my way. Right, so that was our last box, I think. Is that true? I don't want to discourage you, I'm just... <laughs> I, I just think scores. that will help Mike edit it a little bit. Yeah. Great. Good point. Good. Yeah, I just want to... Kathy's moving her hand. <laughs> so, I'm just <laughs> a little confused with where we catch her. I didn't keep good notes, I guess. Okay, so that's the one I want to see. Oh, oh, oh. go back, go back. I'm going to go with these. That's pretty um, nice there. Um, I did think of one more thing for this one. And that's um, help with the finances of our recycling system. As a, as a pro, uh, uh, pro. Yeah. Say that again. Assist <laughs> with the finances of our recycling system. Okay. Dan asked about why food waste is there. It might be covered in the note. Remember, this is what he yeah. answered. Yeah, I think that was the note. It's a yeah. little, it, it's a little confusing there. Um, for the cons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't want to eat our food waste. Yeah. <laughs> 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 totally. 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 Do we know I would that? see I we, we added above um, language that captured it. Yeah, right. consider the impacts to the consumer cost. It, we, we, we added it where? Uh, to. The above? The, this is a different one. Yes, but we, we added similar language. And I just want to make sure it's consistent. Oh, I see. I, mean, I think the so let me check I mean, some athlete will increase cost. It might increase the cost of a product but decrease the cost of running a waste system that right. so that considering about one wall at the end you might have an thing. Could save you money. I think that's what I anticipated. It'll also encourage more shopping in New Hampshire or could. It could. It could, yeah. That's yeah. Quarter so issues, I think the language, yeah. the language is in issues. the second, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, mm -hmm. I think the second uh, item. All right. What about that? Does it grab me? We'll look at the main screen. Oh, my. Let's get that small down here. Down. There we go. Increase cost. Go back up. It's in the notes. Increase cost. Um, impact on consumer prices should, should be assessed. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. We add that to the note down below. Mm -hmm. That's to the note, don't we? Yep. And add that to the note down below. Okay. And which one was that? Oh. It's the EPR Second one. one. Third one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. This one? Uh, this one. The one that the modulated key factors may be in conflict. Okay. So does it go into the notes? We also had um, the access to products should also be assessed. You could just put that in one impact on consumer prices and access. Impact on consumer prices and access to products. To products. Like that? Of course. All right. I 
sense uh, overwhelming contentment. Seeking <laughs> into the group. This must be the sound of God. Going once, going twice, so. <laughs> so I'm getting a little, but our, I think we made it from one end to the other, re editing the thing. Just so I had to save button after the time. Here we go. Saving often for having enough. All right. So, um, Michael Brady, can you uh, join us at the table just and help us uh, know what, how these things will get put together and work that way? Um, so, can I say? Yeah. Please. One of the things that, that I... I'm looking at when I look at the table is not necessarily content, but how certain other proposals have similar themes, but are not grouped together. Um, and so one of the things I did is I looked at that there, there are themes where you can group some of your proposals together. There's a theme about product standards, where you have proposals to address PFAS or chemicals of emerging concern about recyclability, recycled contact, content, compostability, and then about hotel products. You could put that underneath one theme. The other theme is EPR in general, what the scope of it is, printed material, glass, the hard plastics, slash three, six, and seven, whether or not to integrate it with the bottle bill. There's a cost function underneath the EPR proposals, uh, the manufacturers bear, potential for echo-modulated fees and then the, the impact on consumers. A third fee is those echo-modulated fees separate from EPR, with, for example, one of the proposals being a fee on printed materials. The fourth theme is the bottle bill in general. You just talked about increasing in scope, you talked about increasing the deposit, you talked about correcting the inefficiencies, and you have it that's potentially not specific or not integrated with EPR. So that's another theme. And then the last theme would be consumer forward or consumer focused. Consumer education, motivation to recycle, consumer education on contamination, and avoid increases on consumer prices, maintain access to products, a task force with oversight, and then generalized enforcement. So you could consolidate all of these into those themes. I'm not changing any of the content of what you just did, just putting kind of subject matter over each of them. And that will allow for me to summarize your discussions um, in the content of the report. Everyone comfortable with that? Yep. Yes, Thank you. That sounds like a great idea. Um, be more user friendly. Right. Yeah. All over. So we already talked about how at a paragraph with the disclaimer. Um, I tried to start writing one, but you guys were all a little bit of a moving target. So uh, I, I will have to, I'll have to give you some language and I fully expect some, some edits on that. Um, and then I wanna just kind of walk through the, the skeleton framework of the report. Um, no, I'm sorry, I just, so this is just a skeleton it's it's based off of, of another report um, of substantial size that uh, the ledge council did for um, for study committee you have a table of contents and you could include in this table of contents all your your written testimony or your commission response but you didn't really do much of that, but you do have a substantial amount of information on the website. So as Senator Bray referenced earlier, you could include effectively a reference page with a, a link to each of the, with the title of each of the documents, the author, and a link to it. So the report will basically be interactive in nature and allow for people to look at all the material um, that's been provided. So you could look at Chaz Miller's presentation. You could look at um, the the Recycling Institute's in, information. So it, it's it's not excluding anything, and it's everything's available um, for reference within the report. Yeah. Sound good, everyone? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, it 
One of the attachments that's already attached is the report that a &R supplied at the beginning um, of the study committee. It, it addresses the first two to three charges of the committee. Um, it, I recommend that it be included in full as an attachment to the report, which, which it is right now. So that would be another attachment. Your, your table would be another attachment in full. Um, so it could be referenced, uh, and so everyone can go and look at exactly what your recommendations or alternatives are. Um, so that will go in um, as you approve it. Would that, would you, are you suggesting, as you did at the beginning, about grouping things together, changing how the table then is put together? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just reorganizing the table. Yeah. There will be subheadings for each one of the, the different themes. I'll call them that. I'm not going to call them proposals, it's just themes. Um, um, then you get the statutory charge, it's exactly what was in the act. Um, then one of the things that you can do is a background. Um, some committee reports do this, tell you how it got here, it would summarize uh, the discussion at the Act 69 level. Frankly, I would probably pull from my Act Summary for Act 69 to, to give the background on this. And then some reports do a summary of the meetings that they've had. Um, that's really up to you if you want to include it or not. Uh, it's usually basic. You met on this day. You heard from these people. Yeah. Um, do you want that? All right, um, and then you get to the recommendations. I don't think, at least I heard you said you didn't want to call them recommendations. Um, you can again call them themes or, or alternatives for discussion. Items for further consideration is what you're uh, Items for, for further consideration. Okay. And, and then if it's okay with you, I would group those items generally it, as the themes that you have on your table, and I would just summarize effectively what those are and refer for detail to the table. Yep. Uh, and that's basically what the report would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any one think of something they thought we should be including that we haven't outlined? So, um, Michael, when we look at the draft report uh, at, on page 11 um, in the background section, um, yeah. all right, so this is the A&R report that they provided um, at the beginning of the working group. Oh, 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 okay, yes, it is. Okay, so I will stay right out of that. And, and I, I can probably... <laughs> On page 10, there's the, the <laughs> title. All right, so I think I can get you a draft. Um, this week's going to be hard because of the Senate drafting deadline and other working groups, but I will have time early next week to start writing this um, vigorously. Well, um, oh, well, then I thought we should... Um, just uh, send everyone a copy directly. And, um, I had talked about we could uh, list everyone on the committee. That would be another traditional thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if people are feeling ceremonial enough. They want to actually sign off on the on the report, or you know, that's your your John Hancock. Somebody circulate a piece of paper. People sign it with their name, and then that goes. This is 21st century. I don't think we need that anymore. <laughs> Just listing. Just yeah. listing and affiliation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. There is that list from representing right. such and such, representing such and such. That would be a useful thing. So people know one. Who was here for what reason? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll stay modern. Just small comment. Okay. Um, Anything else? Right. So again, thank you everyone. And
thanks for hanging in there on figuring out a way to edit. You know, I mean, one of the things that's unusual around this group is that um, sometimes when we have meetings, you know, I said you pretty much have a pretty clear idea of what you're going to ask people to do and how it's going to come out. So, and here, over and over again, I said, well, let's think about this together in real time. And we gave ourselves five minutes to reread something, and then we relaunched our conversation. So I really appreciate you both just digging in and doing the work with others. So thank you very much. And that was no other business. Thank you. Thank you.